All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think we're live here. All right, am I being heard? Can you hear me? Can't, can't really hardly read from here, but um, if, you, if y'all could, uh, let's, let's see. I see a morning, Ed. Good morning. <laughs> Nighttime over here. I think that's what it says. I can't read from here. Okay, you can hear. Okay. Let's do some catfish blues. Thanks everybody for showing up. I would appreciate your super chat so I can get this video demonetized in about uh, 20 different ways, especially with the, the naughty language that I use that YouTube doesn't like. And sometimes they content ID me on stuff that's fucking 80 years old. I think we'll do some uh, some lead belly. Yonder comes a Miss Rosie. How in the world do you know? Well, I know about an apron and the dress she wore. Umbrella on the shoulder, a piece of paper in her hand. Well, I'm gonna ask the governor to turn loose my man. That the midnight special. Shine the light on me Let the midnight special Shine the ever the light on me When you get some in the morning And that big bell rang Well, they march you to the table Be the same damn thing Not the poker on the table Nothing in my pan If you say anything about it You have trouble with a man Let the midnight special Shine the light on me Let the midnight special Shine the ever loving light on me Well if you ever go to Houston Well you better walk right Well you better not squabble And you better not fight Bashing Bronco will arrest you That boo will take you down 
Sugar land bound Let the midnight special Shine the light on me Midnight special Shine the ever of the night on me Well, jump a little Judy She's a mighty fine girl With Judy Broad jumping In this whole round world Where well, she brought it in the morning Just before day Well, she brought me the news That my wife was dead That started me to grieve And in all and crying I was getting mighty worried About it's been a long time Shine the light on me Let the midnight special Shine the light on me Let the midnight special Shine the light on me Let the midnight special Shine the ever loving light on me There's a lead belly That'll be my only 12-string tune for tonight, because I hate those things. An old bluegrass song the Stanley Brothers did. I think it's older than them, but they, they made it big. And, um, you know, it was on the old Brother Where Aren't They All movie. Should have been a little higher. I didn't have my capo on me. Oh well. Uh, I'll keep this guitar. That's some uh, Bill Brunzi, Key to the Highway. Well, I can tune this thing.
close enough. Close enough. I got the key to the highway Been out and bound to go I'm gonna leave it running cause walking was too slow I'm going back to the border Where I'm better known Cause you ain't done nothing but I just recorded that one recently, probably be on the record. I haven't played it much live. I don't think I've ever done it uh, in front of a, like a live audience. Uh, hmm. Let's do some more slag. <laughs> So I own all the fuck ups Any super chats you want to send I'll read those when I get done playing really Would appreciate those a lot I also got a Patreon and a PayPal You got Patreon benefits Like um, you know exclusive content And things like that uh, Free MP3s And don't forget to hit that subscribe button Or smash that subscribe button I think that's, that's what these stupid fuckers Say now on the internet <laughs> Sun House.
satisfaction Don't care what you do Well, it's so hard Love someone don't love you Don't look like satisfaction Lord, I don't care what you do Well, I didn't feel so bad Till the good old sun went down I didn't have a soul To throw my arms around Well, didn't feel so bad Until the good old sun went down Well, I didn't have a soul now I to throw my arms around Satisfaction will leave you feeling sad and blue. Well, love's hard on fall, make you do things you don't want to do. Love sometimes will leave you feeling sad and blue. Sun House, Death Letter Blues. Pretty sure he wrote that one in the 60s, but it was based on one he did in the 30s called My Black Mama. Of course, it's also the basis for the walking blues. I can't play slide on this guitar. Oh, let's see, what do we got here? Uh, let's try some Tommy Johnson. Do some uh, Can Heat Blues. He, he was actually the original Soul to Soul to the Devil guy before Robert Johnson. It was actually Tommy Johnson. to my 
my soul now Oh, they're gonna kill me dead. All right. So Tommy Johnson there, Can Heat Blues. we got here I'm gonna do one I've never done before in front of any audience I barely even practiced it this is a song by Arthur Crudup the same guy that wrote that's all right mama that Elvis Presley made big it's called rock me mama and not like a wagon wheel fuck that song up a contributor to early rock and roll also wrote uh, old midnight train I think no no, no that, I don't think that was somebody else he did do that's all right mama not midnight train mystery trains what I was thinking about I think I got one more before I sit down and talk to y'all Here's some muddy waters. It's called sitting here drinking. Well, I've been sitting here drinking. I'm just as lonesome as a man can be. Man. I'm 
wondering if you were the one for me. So many times I told you I wasn't going that far. And I feel like keeping out of work Get over here and talk to y'all for a minute. Cheap mic stand. Uh, see if I can read what's going on here. Bob Dylan was the co-writer. Yeah, I believe he did co-write uh, Rock Me Mama Like a Wagon Wheel. If you play any kind of a live acoustic music, um, you're gonna you're gonna grow to hate wagon wheel. <laughs> like Dylan was great, but um, you know, not everything he wrote was pure gold. Need to get over this way. I need a tripod in my way. What's up, everybody? How's everybody doing? Didn't get no super chats. Coming off of a, you know, weekend full of gigs. I played Cinco de Mayo. I played at a brewery. Got fucked up at the brewery. Still recovering from the brewery. Dylan did have a great talent for songwriting. Yes, he did. He was a great lyricist. I, I saw him when I was probably 18. This is when he, he came out with, uh, was it Love and Theft was the record he came out with? Oh, Gizmodus, five bucks. Thank you for that. Thanks, Ed. Any ragtimey stuff? I, I might pull out Cannonball Rag a little bit later. I'm, I'm just about comfortable playing that one live, that hard-ass song. Says, good, how was your week? Uh, yeah, you know, just playing, All right? Nice hat, thank you. That's my new Stetson that I got. 
Stetson Blackhawk, I believe it's called. So I finally own a real cowboy hat. I'm not gonna do the fedora thing, like not on the internet. I mean, I know I know blue singers are supposed to wear fedoras and shit. I ain't going there. Maybe if I got into archaeology, I'd get one or something in a whip or something. I don't know. It says, how was the brewery? Pretty good gig. That was a, a like a double acoustic gig, me and another guy. And um, I just uh, got drunk on a bunch of um, brewery beer. <laughs> I, this is the Aiken Brewery. I actually played there 20 years ago when I was 18, and this is the first time I've played there since then. Because uh, 20 years ago, my drunk dad showed up and showed his ass, you know. Fez, I don't think a Fez would look right on me with this with this hair. <laughs> could, you, could you imagine what that would look like? Just glad you're feeling better. Yeah, I'm over the cold. That was a that was a pretty mild cold, you know. A lot of times I get a cold and I'll hack stuff up for like two weeks, but that didn't happen this time. Carolina Ed and the Temple of Blues. <laughs> Yeah, that, that, that could be a silly movie. Yeah. Barrel House seems appropriate. Yeah, yeah. I, like, um, let's call it Barrel House Sunday. Let me see. My, I need to do Barrel House Blues. I haven't learned that one. It's an old one. I'm sure Mr. Waterman would love to talk to you, Ed. He's a super nice guy and loves talking about old bluesmen. What, wasn't Dick Waterman like Sunhouse's manager? Is he is he still alive? Did you have COVID? Uh, nah, I, I didn't have it. I I got home tested for it, and yeah, it was just a cold. In fact, I I don't think I ever caught it unless I was asymptomatic. Like my wife got it, and I didn't get it. Open a beer. Porter Hefeweizen. What do you think? If you ever start a Twitch channel, I'd be glad to be your moderator. I I haven't really looked into Twitch. I don't know much about it. I'm, I guess I'm like a kind of a boomer or something. <laughs> like when it comes to Twitch, I think that's more more like the younger crowd, isn't it? That is a nice hat now that it was mentioned. Oh, no, thank you. Okay, we got one vote for Porter, one vote for Heffa. We need a tiebreaker here. We got American Porter, because the British one's coming a four pack, and I wanted a six pack. And we got the the Meisel's Vice Hefeweizen. Okay, he said Porter. He he broke the tie. Let's open a Porter. Get more Porters. Okay, Porter it is. So oh, I poured in my Hefeweizen glass. Founders Porter. It's, uh, yeah, good shit. A 
lovely way to start the day, 7 a.m. here. Oh, you, they must be overseas. <laughs> what tuning did you use on your resonator tonight? Uh, I, I like to rewatch your streams later and pick along. That was an open G, Spanish tuning. I don't know if it's going to be a 440 based because <laughs> I just kind of tuned them by ear. Especially, I, I think that uh, that Martin was a little low. What's your smoke of choice? Uh, you got the uh, old-fashioned Lucky Strikes. They're really cheap now. Watch out. The beer police will come and shut you down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm surprised they didn't shut me down that last time I had those Michelob Ultras. Ah, that's a good porter. Made in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Okay, yeah, I didn't know where that brewery was. I'm not sure exactly where in Germany the Meisel's Vice is from. It's like, I don't know, like Funkenwagnerstein town or something. I don't know. Uh, let me let me go back and um, see if there was any questions while I was playing. Well, it won't let me go back. Oh, never mind. <laughs> no, wait. Oh, yeah, I can. Dick Waterman's 86 now, lives in North Mississippi. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll have to try to talk to him one day. I wonder if he gets on the Internet. So, yes, he's actually the one that rediscovered Sunhouse. Right, yeah. So some guy commented on my channel when I did the uh, the video about Sunhouse, and he said he he had known Dick Waterman and met Sunhouse uh, back in the day. And I was like, damn, that's pretty cool, you know. Why are Lucky Strikes so cheap now? They used to be super expensive. No, it's, they're like four-something dollars a pack here now, Um like in South Carolina, like um, a pack of camels is like seven bucks. These Lucky Strikes are four or something, and they're still good. They don't they don't smoke like cheap cigarettes. What is that model resonator, by the way? Um, that that is, that is a Morgan Monroe round neck. I don't think they make the round necks anymore. They they make the square necks uh, exclusively now, I believe. Let me see. Um, can you do Freebird or or Leonard Skinner? How about Simple Man? <laughs> I'm afraid I uh, never heard of them. Uh, or that, that's what I tell people at gigs. <laughs> um, hey Ed, a question: Why isn't blues popular? Hmm. I mean, um, it's the same reason uh, nothing else is popular besides pop music uh, no, nobody really has a music education now um people kind of um people are kind of narrow when it comes to what genres they'll listen to you know um let's see here you ever thought about covering the uh, blind willie mctell song broke down engine blues that's my favorite song by him i, I might try to learn that yeah i've been um been needing to do another Willie McTell video. I, I got Statesboro out there. Yes, he is on the internet, Dick Waterman. I, I was in a, a Zoom call with him yesterday for two hours. I have his phone number and can give you. I also have his email. Hell, I'm, you know, have his people call my people, <laughs> like, a, or, you know, send him to my channel, tell him to email me or something. Yeah, that would be cool. But, um, yeah, the, the Facebook, I hardly ever check, so it just goes through email. I think my email address is in my, my newer videos. It says, whoa, just woke up, uh, opened YouTube, and saw this. The first time uh, watching your live stream that 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 is, like, actually live. Oh, welcome. You missed most of the music. I might play a few more later. I usually start off with music, and then I get on here and talk, you know. How about Hairway to Steven? <laughs> Sounds like it would make a good band name. Like a Led Zeppelin cover band or something. <laughs> Let's see. 
crazy. My Marlboro Reds I buy are ten bucks a pack in California. Yeah, it sucks. Like, yeah, the you know, the expensive ones here in South Carolina are seven bucks. I mean, we, but you know, we live right next to North Carolina, which is the tobacco capital of the world. Traveling Blues by McTell is probably my favorite. I'm going to learn another McTell song. Like I, I was trying to get Southern Can as mine down, but there, there's just too many damn lyrics. Like it's, uh, he, he was one of those guys that liked to fit like way more lyrics than there should be in a verse. It's just like completely off the beat. It's no wonder Dylan liked him so much. Um. I emailed you his email earlier today. Okay, I'll check my email. I haven't looked at it today. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, love from Malaysia. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, that's, so that would be uh, it'd be down in the South Pacific, wouldn't it? Yeah. That's pretty awesome. You've got people from all over the world watching. See, Stairway Denied, yeah. I, I used to play that back in high school and stuff, and I saw Wayne's World and was like, ah, I probably shouldn't play that anymore. I usually miss all the live streams, so I watch the uh, live after it. Oh, okay. Well, I've done a few of these. We're getting it down, I think. I mean, um, um, can, can y'all comment on how the sound was tonight? Was the guitar booming like it was last time? Good to see you, Edward. Sunday nights are great. Yeah, yeah, I figured more people would be, like, you know, off on Sunday or not doing anything, you know. Says, he isn't very good with computers, Dick Waterman, uh, though it is, is the only thing. So if, so if you want to interview him, you'll have to explain it to him. Oh, yeah, <laughs> probably teach him how to use uh, Skype or something. Goddamn cigarette inflation. Yeah, they've gone up a lot. <laughs> Like since I started smoking twenty years ago, like I'll have one now. Born to Die is my favorite Willie Mitchell song. That's a good one. You would be a major hit in Malaysia if you were known. They they listen to blues in Malaysia. Waterman can email back and forth, but other than that, he isn't very good with computers. Yeah, I would imagine if he's he's 86. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Um, sound was good, best yet in my opinion. Sound tonight, excellent. Sound a great man, great playing too. Oh, Hairway to Steven is a butthole surfer's record. Okay, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, they, they used to be on Alternative Tentacles, I think, weren't they? Like those Jello Biafra's label. Get him known, spread the gospel. Yeah, yeah, spread it around, man. Um, I think you play in Def Letter in a slightly different tuning. Threw me off at first, but other than that, sounds good to me. I, I might I might be off of 440. I know that because I, I just kind of play it by ear when I'm playing by myself. I, I only use a tuner when I'm you know playing with other people. Do a little Skip James. I, I might be able to pull some Skip James out a little bit later if I can find the lyrics to it. Do those Lucky Strikes have filters? Yeah, yeah, they're filtered. I'm guessing they weren't back in the day. I, I bought some filterless camels one time by accident. That sucked. Took me a month to smoke them. And you would be an inspiration to the thousands of budding guitarists here. Oh, that's cool. Guitar is getting big there. It's kind of declining over here, I think. <laughs> Like people just wanting to play guitar. Are you playing anymore or in the pines? I played that last week. I, I might pull it out a little later if you're still around. Favorite punk band? Mm hmm. Ooh, shit. 
There's a, there's a lot of uh, probably the dead Kennedys. I, I, like my favorite punk record was the Frankenchrist record. I like Crass. I like uh, uh, Subhumans. The you know the UK Subhumans. Um, mostly some older stuff. Kind of like the the Casualties um, when they're brilliant lyrics. <laughs> Or could do Crow Jane. Oh yeah, I did that one last week too. I might, uh, yeah, I might be able to do it. Yesterday, Waterman told me Sunhouse looked up to Charlie Patton a lot, but was envious because Patton made it in the twenties and thirties as a professional musician. Thought that was interesting. Yeah, yeah. When Sun uh, was playing back in the thirties, like his records didn't sell a whole lot. Um, you know, Charlie Patton actually made a lot of money. Ah, Nirvana played into pines. Yeah, the, the, the version I do is kind of close to the Nirvana one because it's you know the same lead belly style version. You know any King Solomon Hill songs? I don't think I know any. I have to look look some up. Favorite music besides blues? That's a tough one. Uh, I, I like bluegrass a lot. I, I like um, rock, mostly psychedelic rock or you know, Beatles and stuff like that. Um, you know, I like some old country. I like jazz, like uh, or like bebop type jazz, and you know, Miles Davis and stuff like that. I listen to classical records. Kind of gotten soured on classic rock from having to play it so many years. Uh, I kind of like, as far as rock, I like the weirder stuff. Like I, I'm the only person who thinks that uh, the first Pink Floyd record was the best one. East Bay Ray, the guitar. Yeah, that was, he was the guitar player for the Dead Kennedys. I'm the only dude in my school that listens to the old blues, but I'm damn proud of it. <laughs> I was probably the only one too at my school when I was in high school. All my friends were punks, you know. Do you ever play at blues festivals? I haven't played one yet. Uh, we, we got a we got one in Thompson, Georgia, kind of close to here, called the Blind Willie McTell Festival. It's um, it's run by a committee. I've talked, you know, the, the guy at the museum when I was doing the Blind Willie video, he actually knows the committee, so he, he, he said he might put in for us and stuff. I said, man, you're missing out on King Solomon Hill. Has the amazing voice. Can't compare him to anyone. I have to look some of that up. Which slide do you prefer, glass, metal, or porcelain? I, I prefer metal ones. I got some bottlenecks. Um, I, I don't really like the glassy sound all that much. I'm more into like metal ones. Let's see. Uh, do you know how to play Savannah Mama by Blind Willie Mattel? No, I, I can try to learn it. Piper at the Gates of Dawn. Yeah, that that was the that was the best Pink Floyd record. The, the stuff that Sid Barrett wrote. When there's a crazy guy in the band, the music's always better. The Def Letter Blues is easy. Yeah, it's, it's, Def Letter Blues ain't too hard. The Sunhouse wasn't like a virtuoso guitar player. He was more about the voice, you know. So I saw a, I saw a video of Helen Wolf giving Son a hard time about his drinking. Yeah, I've seen that before. I think I think it's in my my Sunhouse video, like the the, the little documentary I did on him. Let's see. Uh, you play out of the states? No, I've never been out of the states. <laughs> Chesapeake Bay Blues Festival happening this year. Is that Virginia or Maryland? Look. 
yeah, I've, I've never left the United States, never been to Canada or Mexico. I, I felt like I was in Mexico the other day, Cinco de Mayo, uh, you know, burning up and shit. <laughs> I've seen it too. He kept heckling him. Yeah, yeah. Sunhouse was like a big drunk, you know, and he, uh, he he's, he's heckling Howlin' Wolf, and Howlin' Wolf like kind of pones him and stuff. He's like, you, you done spend all your money on liquor or just something like that. It's like you, you like to drink too much. Played any Mississippi John Hurt? I I do stack a Lee. I think I did that one last week. Chesapeake Blues Festivals in Maryland. I, I was in Maryland about 15 minutes one time. <laughs> like when I went to D.C., you know, we crossed the border for a little bit. Have you found that it's easier to memorize the lyrics to other songs than it is to memorize the lyrics to your own songs? Now, I, I suck at lyrics. Like, I, I, I've never done good with them. I, I forget stuff I've been singing for 20 years. That's why I've got lyrics like on this big board right beside me. Crab cakes and football. Yeah, that sounds like Maryland. Yeah. <laughs> I've spent more time in Virginia, probably. The whole scene was set up by Alan Lomax to get a bunch of old bluesmen to make some genuine scene of a bunch of drunk bluesmen. Lomax completely loaded that room with whiskey. I, <laughs> but that was probably a good trick, you know, to get them all drunk and stuff. Can you do any uh, J. Bell, uh, J. B. Lenoir, or Memphis Mini songs? Well, I, I know um, uh, when the levee breaks. Like I, I had a pretty big video on that one. Let's see, West Helena Blues Festival. You should come. I'm not sure where that is. Where was that at? Ever been to the West Coast? Nah, like for as far west as I've gone is uh, Mississippi, or well, well, technically Arkansas. We crossed the river for a little bit, and I was in Arkansas. So that's <laughs> yeah, that's as far west. I, I have crossed the Mississippi River like for about twenty minutes. Not very well traveled, which which is the kind of a thing here in the South. We we don't get out much. So the West Helen is in Arkansas. Okay, is, it, is that close to Mississippi, or is it on the other side? Any chance of a uh, live stream with your band when you play? Well, um, I mean, if I could get the the technical nightmare of setting up a band figured out, uh, you know, on on a live stream, like doing that, running the sound, <laughs> I'd probably have to have a sound guy for that. This it's just pretty hard to get it right with just me in here. You know, I I give it a listen on headphones before I start the streams, and uh, sometimes I still end up, uh, you know, with the guitar booming and things like that. Let's see. It says, and I checked out Robert Johnson. Oh yeah, that, yeah. That, I mean, Johnson was probably the the pinnacle of, you know, like pre-war blues singers. Of course, you know he. You know, like Shakespeare level lyrics and uh, badass guitar playing. Dick Waterman told me that Sunhouse wanted whiskey so bad that he would sell his national guitars that he would get to pawn shops for for whiskey money. <laughs> yeah. 
Who's that? Um, th- th- there's a guy that's uh, got some stuff on YouTube. Um, he, he teaches guitar. He he knew uh, Gary Davis really well, but he also knew Sunhouse. He's a, a Jewish guy. Um, I cannot think of his name right now, but he. He, he said uh, way back when, when a son house came to New York, he let him stay w- at his parents' house, and he, like, drank everything in the whiskey cabinet and, um, like, burned a hole in the rug with his cigar and stayed up all night, like, singing and raising hell and stuff, and his parents got all pissed off. Let me see. I just thought it was kind of horrifying hearing the old blues quality. You, you get used to it. I, I tend to like shitty sounding records. I, I don't like um, stuff that's like overly processed, you know. Stefan Grossman, that's, that's who I'm talking about. Yeah, that's the guy that uh, had Sun House over at his parents' house. Yeah. <laughs> When Sunhouse retired, people would drive to his apartment with whiskey and a tape recorder and get him to record songs, and that was the uh, Sunhouse at Home album that was uh, just him drunk the whole time. <laughs> he loved his liquor. Yeah, he'd, he'd get drunk at shows and not be able to play and stuff. Have you ever seen the movie Cadillac Records, which is about chess records? No, I have not seen that. That would be a good movie to catch. Why am I getting a gun ad? <laughs> Putting gun ads on my... Okay, don't bother me at all. Seventy-eight Vocalion record, hi-fi, LOL. Yeah, <laughs> I, I've thought about dropping the uh, the huge amount of money that old blues seventy-eights go for on eBay, but I I don't have a seventy-eight record player anymore. I used to, but I mean, um, I'd, I'd be scared to play it and wear it out more. Sunhouse drunk yelling at Helen Wolf. Yeah, that yeah, that video's on YouTube. You can find it. He's like, you ain't got no money because you don't drunk all yours up. Look at what you done with your life. <laughs> Some shit like that. Your thoughts on Clapton's contribution to acoustic blues resurgence in 1992. Yeah, I mean, um, when he did that Unplugged show, he uh, he got a lot of people interested in, um, you know, blues music and stuff in general. And, uh, I mean, um, he, he he did he did a pretty good uh, justice to Robert Johnson when he did those uh, recordings. You know, when he, he, uh, he, he played some stuff on a video at, at the same hotel that Robert Johnson was recorded in. See, R. Crumb has a huge collection of 78s. The only 78s I got are like some old Bing Crosby records I got from my grandpa. I can't play them. Mr. Waterman was telling me he he tried to preserve Sun House the best he could, but the they just couldn't do anything about it. <laughs> Yeah, I've heard he would he would show up for gigs like too drunk to play and he would just like get on the mic and run his mouth and stuff. The movie has representations of Wolf Waters, Walter, Etta James, and Chuck Berry. It's an all right movie, albeit super exaggerated. Man, I'd have to look that up. I've never even heard of the movie. Songs for Robert J. That, that's the video that Clapton did. Yeah. For the sessions for Robert Johnson, yeah. Have you ever seen Deep Blues, a documentary done 
about the last Hill Country Blues guys in Mississippi introduced R.L. Burnsides and Junior Kimbrough to the world. I think I might have seen that on YouTube at some point. I saw something about the Hill Country people and R.L. Burnsides was on there. You got to look up, uh, motherfucker stole my check, stole my check, motherfucker stole my check. That's the R.L. Burnside's playing live. Said, I've been to that hotel. This is in Dallas, ain't it? Took the British uh, to get mainstream Americans to realize what they had. Yeah, yeah, the blues got really big in Britain in the 60s. And then it kind of migrated back over here. We we had kind of forgotten about it here, you know. Cadillac Records equals good movie. Yeah, I got to look that up. Like I, I always thought the Rolling Stones um, had just as good of blues records as anybody. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm a Beatles guy as far as uh, rock material, but they, they had some damn good blues records. But yeah, Ian Anderson like from Jethro Tull was saying, yeah, if you, if you were playing in London in the 60s and you wanted to make any money, you had to play blues. It's like, damn, I, I wish it was like that now. <laughs> Did R.L. Burnside just bad you know? <laughs> Have an old Presley 45 I got at a yard sale that's scratched, and it always skips at uh, Everybody Less Rock, which used to used to crack me up. You talking about uh, you talking about good rocking tonight? Yeah, I can play that one on the electric. Early Stones tunes were great. Yeah, it was a solid band there, you know. I think the rock music over here had got kind of stale. Uh, you know, then the Beatles came along and you know, all the British guys, and they kind of, um, you know, gave it a new lease of life. Big Bill brought the blues to Britain. Yeah, yeah, they brought him over there. He was probably one of the first ones to go over there, wasn't he? Says, hell yeah, Beatles greater than Stones. Yeah, I, I'm solidly a, a Beatles guy. I'll drop a hundred bucks to see McCartney again. I, I don't know if I'd drop a hundred to see the Stones without Charlie Watts. You know, I, I bet I bet the rhythm section's not not as good anymore now. Can Heat's my favorite '60s blues band. Love Alan Wilson's voice. He wasn't he um, one of those guys in Can Heat actually uh, was was the guy that kind of. Tried to help reteach uh, guitar to Sunhouse, I believe. What's your favorite slide material? Glass, metal, ceramic. I always like metal. Um, I got a brass one over there, and I got a chrome uh, deep socket that I use. I got some bottlenecks, but I don't use them as much. I don't. I'm not really into glass. It says yes, he was. Must be talking about Alan Wilson. Even married a German girl there and had a kid, I think. He he is still alive. Huh. What, uh, Alan Wilson? Have a P.O. box yet? No, I haven't opened one up yet. It says, I have something for you. Huh. Well, I'll... I'll I'll see about getting one opened up, and do like a send me your stuff type of thing, you know. And the Beatles gave a throwaway 
composition of theirs to help the Stones out in the early 60s. I want to be your man. Yeah, yeah, that's the that one that Ringo always sang. Yeah, they, that was the Stones' first hit. Yeah, they, they, they gave some throwaways to a few bands that went to number one. No, I'm talking about Big Bill. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I think Alan Wilson. I think he's dead, isn't he? Alan Wilson actually played harmonica for Sun House. Oh, okay. You like the Animals? Yeah, that's a pretty good band. You know, Chaz Chandler's responsible for uh, getting Jimi Hendrix big. I know that Alan Wilson, for a fact, during a live show at a wedding, placed his guitar on the cake unknowingly because he was blind as hell. Shit. <laughs> yeah, that's why I don't play weddings. I'd probably do something stupid. John Fahey helped Skip James uh, relearn his songs, I think. He, he was a good friend of Alan Wilson. Oh, I didn't... So I, I thought uh, I thought Skip James was still pretty intact when he got rediscovered. Hmm. Maybe he'd forgotten a lot of his old stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah Sunhouse. He needed some um, uh, needed a little help along there. He said he relearned really fast. So yeah, Alan Wilson overdosed. Okay, yeah. Hence the nickname, The Blind Owl. I had to learn his slide parts for, um, what's that song, Get Together. Or, Let, let's get together, come on, come on, let, let's get together. Like, I played that with a band for a while. It's time to open a Hefweizen now. I drank this porter. Yeah, that's the Hefeweizen. It's got yeast in it, so you got to swirl it around a little bit, get that yeast out of the bottom. Beautiful. Not sure if you've been asked this before, but were you influenced at all by Chet Atkins? Yeah, I've played some of his stuff. I mean, uh, he's a great finger picker, of course. I I was um, I was more of a listener to Merle Travis because his, his stuff is a little more accessible, I think. But <laughs> um, I, I think I, I did learn um, Black Mountain Rag from listening to Chet Atkins. So John Katz, ten dollars. Thank you for that. Thank, thanks, Edward. I enjoy your playing, and I always learn a new lick. Yeah, appreciate them super chats, man. Uh, kind of the life of the show here. Uh, 
what y'all opinion on cream? Oh, I love cream. Huge cream fan. I, I think that was uh, some of Clapton's last good rock stuff. <laughs> I, I, I've listened to cream incessantly since uh, about the age of 14 or so. Even bought a SG because of it. Didn't repaint it though. Does that one have a banana e flavor to it? Yeah, kind of. I mean, that, that's that's kind of what you get with hefeweizen in this, you know, banana and cloves. It comes from the yeast. Thank you for inspiring me to play the blues. Well, cool. Yeah, I'm glad I'm uh, having an effect on somebody. <laughs> You know, uh, getting some people into this stuff. How did you learn the blues? Uh, well, I I started listening to it probably in high school because I, I, I had been listening to Hendrix and Cream and Dylan, and I, I wanted to see what they were listening to. And so I picked up some like some Robert Johnson. I had a Muddy Waters record and a John Lee Hooker record, and that's yeah, I started from there. What's your favorite Marshall Tucker song? Uh, hmm. Ooh. Uh, I don't know, see you later. I'm gone. Uh, kind of like um, Fly Eagle Fly. Yeah, I'm, I'm from South Carolina. That's probably the only good band from here. I hated Hootie and the Blowfish. I had a cousin that went to college with them. I agree. That's the best Clapton I've heard. Cream, yeah, <laughs> definitely. I, I, I thought his uh, I thought his rock stuff after Cream got kind of um, I don't know what would you call it, uh, dad rock. And he just kind of stopped playing guitar, you know. In my opinion, Cream and Derek and the Dominoes are his best. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, Cream, definitely. One of my favorite bands of all time. In fact, like... <laughs> Like when I'm judging if um, musicians in my band are worth a fuck, I'm usually comparing them to Ginger Baker and Jack Bruce. <laughs> I found much inspiration from your channel as well. Thank you. Oh, I appreciate that a lot. It says still love Derek and the Dominoes. Well, you know that that that's his uh, that's his most famous you know type of deal as a solo artist. Hootie and the Blowfish, ha ha. Yeah, definitely, ha ha. Yeah. <laughs> Giving South Carolina a bad name. Also, Alan Wilson had a huge collection of 78. So yeah, all, all those, all those like folky um, American blues guys, the, the guys that got into the blues um, back then, like they, they all had like these giant record collections of Stuff you probably wouldn't believe, like stuff you could get a million dollars on eBay for now. Like they would go around door to door, like in black neighborhoods, and find old people and say, Hey, you got any records for sale? Let's see, uh, After after Derek after Derek out went to hell. <laughs> all burnt in fire, unfortunately. All, all the Alan Wilson records. Uh, he 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 probably had some one of a kind shit too. What are your thoughts on ZZ Top? Uh, good band. I, I wish I had called him before Dusty Hill died. You know my. Um, my my dad used to go see him uh, like back in 1852, 
And um, he said they were so damn loud, like they made my mother pass out <laughs> at a gig, like they were towards the front row. But I mean, uh, Billy Gibbons' guitar playing is like very, very tasteful. Like he, he doesn't he doesn't do a lot of crazy stuff, but he he has real tasteful lead licks. I've heard some rock bands of the recent years that could be called soccer mom rock. Yeah, what what, what are what are soccer moms and Karens listening to now? Like uh, probably. Um, Probably a lot of the '90s material that I was listening to as a kid. <laughs> um, but but not not the cool '90s stuff. It's probably like um, like the uh, post grunge, like uh, Creed and shit like that. Yeah. High standards, LOL. Shit. <laughs> Let Her Cry was a classic 90s song. I like it, LOL. Don't kill me. All right, I'll, I'll let you have one Hootie and the Blowfish song. Okay. Hey, the nostalgia does weird things to you, man. I like stuff from the 90s now that I fucking hated at the time. Like, I'd... Like I, I sometimes like I'll go hide somewhere and make somebody make sure nobody's looking, and like, you know, put on some thick shades and and shit and like, all right, we're gonna hear some Alanis Morissette. <laughs> Pull out the the Tori Amos record. Nickel Clapton WT. Not sure about W WT what that means. Uh know any John Lee Hooker. Yeah, I, I do I do um Crawling King Snake, but it gets me um content ID'd for some reason for a completely different song. Um ZZ Top Good Power Trio. BFG has some cool licks in my opinion. Oh yeah. Had a good guitar tone too. Nickelback, so I guess that's what the Karens and soccer moms listen to now. Yeah, yeah, Nickelback is just a a pimple on the ass of reality. I have to <laughs> and they listen to kids bop. Oh, oh Jesus. Pop country. Yeah, that yeah, that, that sounds like some, some Karens and soccer moms. Clapton with Gibson is great. Yeah, he he played the shit out of that damn SG. Let that painted up when he had. Don't they call Hootie Yacht Rock? Yeah, I mean, they, I think they definitely were like college dudes. And um, of course, I I went to the same college as them, <laughs> like USC. So I mean, they they were, um, uh, yeah, they probably do appeal to like a more um, like a more preppy crowd and stuff. Kays the Elephant. Um, heard a few by them. It's pretty good. Karen's like Nickelback. Uh, Nickelback is just pure evil to me. And this guy says they're all listening to pop punk. Yeah, that that, that sounds about right. Like, um, yeah, yeah, all the all the Blink One Eighty Two chicks. Uh, yeah, probably about forty now, and they, yeah, <laughs> I couldn't stand them. I I did like Green Day though. Greta Van Greta Van Fleet. <laughs> How much would it cost us here to make you play a Hootie song for us live? Uh, well, fortunately, I don't know any. <laughs> it would be about a couple thousand bucks, I think. I don't even play that stuff with cover bands. They listen to James Blunt. Don't think I know him. 
Taylor Hawkins was the drummer for Atlantis. No shame. <laughs> for some reason, Nickelback singer looks like Nicholas Kate. Yeah, come to think of it, he kind of does. I wish he looked like the Crypt Keeper. I, 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 like, I hope he dies horribly and burns to death. Look at your fucking guy. Look at Chad Kroger, yeah. Um, let's see. Ever hear of a banjo player on YouTube named Clifton Hicks? Somebody, I think somebody might have mentioned that name in one of my past uh, live streams. Um, but um, I, I don't think I know too much about him. I, I'll tell you, my favorite banjo guy is going to be um, Raymond Fairchild. He he died a few couple of years ago. He played like, um, you know, like bluegrass banjo. I got to meet him a few times, even uh, drank some of his illicit beverages that he made. Green Day all the way. Dookie is still good. Yeah, well, back back in my day, uh, Green Day Green Day was like the gateway band. Like if you got into punk, that 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 would be the first punk band you heard, and then you'd start listening to deeper stuff, you know. Says, okay, I gotta go. See you later, Mr. Bear, 895. Thank you for showing up. Playing Hootie would cost less than Freebird. I actually kind of know Freebird. I'll do that one for a thousand. <laughs> Nickelback is hated because their songs were played to death. Well, not only that, they were kind of stupid. Like, really, I mean, and like aligned to the grid and sample replaced and all that stuff. She went, oh, just a wanna be big rock car driving 15, friend of 15 cars. <laughs> yeah, I have to hear it like every time I, I go to a bar, I'm trying to set up and they're playing that crap on the jukebox. Billy Gibbons was in that song, wasn't he? There, there's a band called Soccer Mommy. <laughs> Shit. It's got to be a punk band. Ed, have you ever listened to C6 Steve? Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think I know who he is. You got to learn San Fran. I try to look that one up. Heard of Belton Sutherland. He's one of the last players from the day. I know the name. I don't know too much of his stuff. I think I've heard of him. Do you really listen to any bluegrass? Uh, really love a lot of old folk banjo like Doc Boggs and Clarence Ashley, Frank Profty. list goes on. I, I'm actually working on learning a Doc Boggs song, like his version of Oh Death. So, yeah, I... Yeah, I kind of grew up on bluegrass. Got a, there's Bill Monroe right here. I got to meet uh, Bill Monroe a couple times when I was a kid. Nickelback got rocks thrown at them on stage at some festival, and they stormed off. <laughs> well, that's not very rock and roll, is it? She thought some Marcus King. I don't know a whole of hell of a lot about him, really. I've heard the name a few times. Um, don't really know his work. You got to listen to San Francisco Bay Blues. That's totally up your alley. You would kill it. Okay, I'll do that. Blackberry Smoke. Um, be nice. I dig them. I've, I've had to play a couple of their songs in a band before. Like, um, I... I can't say I listen to him very much. I mean, um, the Josh Martin, the, the guy that's in my Statesboro, in my Blind Willie video, um, it was playing with me on there. Like he actually got to meet him. He went to see him in Myrtle Beach, but I, I don't really know much about him. Here at Foggy Mountain Breakdown in the movie Bonnie and Clyde changed my life. Hey, I actually got to see Earl Scruggs like one time right before he died. Like he, he was like 85 or something. I just saw him in Charlotte.
they, they were introducing the song Shady Grove, right? And um, they're saying this, this this here song was written about 250 years ago, and he he says I wrote it, and that's the only thing he said the whole night. <laughs> he he did not speak. He was he was not a talker. Ever heard of Reverend Pearlie Brown? I, let's see, I. I, I think I have heard that name. Not very familiar with him. Somebody mentioned that on the last um, on the last live show, I believe. C6 Steve's probably the person besides Samantha Fish that I can think of who uses a custom bottleneck live. Oh yeah, yeah. She I know Samantha Fish. Like she yeah, she plays that uh, that um, what that cigar box guitar with like four strings on it. Don't she? <laughs> she she actually she actually did shake them on down. It'd be cool to talk to her one day. Let's see. Just got into Reverend Pearlie Brown last week. I'll try to look that up. Are you learning it on banjo? I play folk banjo, claw hammer banjo stuff. Maybe I could give you some tips on, maybe maybe even give you some tips to it sometime. Yeah, I'm learning old death on the banjo. Like, but it's it's pretty easy, you know. Doc Boggs, um, he he had a pretty easy style. He just used like really weird tunings. If you ever have experienced, if you have never experienced blues in the bottle, look up the Holy Modal Rounders. Oh, okay, so I'll give that a give that a listen. Name some other good blues musicians here in South Carolina. Well, as far as the old guys, you uh, you got Pink Anderson, who I'm doing a video on here. Uh, I'm working on. It's going to be coming up soon. He was the Pink and Pink Floyd, actually. Then you got uh, Reverend Gary Davis. That's that's the two big ones. Um, Gary Davis actually was uh, really big with the folkies and stuff before blues got big again over here. You know, um, he he was around like in the fifties and sixties um, up in New York. But he, uh, most of those guys were Piedmont guys. They were from upstate, like a uh, little, little up from me near Spartanburg and Greenville, places like that. So, oh, got a $10 super chat. $10 Australian M MDR. I'd be thrilled if you could perform Hendrix's Killing Floor cover a bit, but anything fast and lively will do. Peace and love from down under. Any kind of Hendrix you do on here, like they completely ban it. Like if they content ID it, that that they'll take your shit down. They they don't even try to steal the money. Like they, they just um they just completely just take it down. <laughs> but yeah, thank you for that super chat. Always appreciate your super chats, man. Um, this is um how I make money on these videos, you know, because I can get demonetized and things like that just for saying fuck too many times and stuff. Basically, um, basically like the same as throwing money in the hat. That's that's what your super chats are on here, um, you know, which YouTube takes 30% of, by the way. <laughs> so, yeah, keep them coming, y'all. Um, let's see. Wasn't C6 Steve a homeless man busking and someone loved it and hooked him up? C6 Steve is great, by the way. I say, a, I, I saw a video of him shredding with a two string guitar. I have to look him up. I don't know. Did I miss the jam? Yeah, but I, I might play one in a little bit, you know. I really don't think Shady Grove was written 250 years ago. Uh, only song that is even relatively close to being that old is Death and the Lady. It's with well, Shady Grove. It, it is pretty old. It's it's at least like maybe early 19th century, if it's not from the the 18th century. And you got you got a lot of you know those old like Appalachian folk songs that kind of migrated over here from Britain. That there was actually a music a musicologist that was traveling around, you know, the mountains in the 1920s, and he was from England, and he he was finding all these these English songs and stuff that had been intact for like a hundred years.
um, Blues in the Bottle. Wasn't that Lightning Hopkins? Might have been a Lightning Hopkins song. Garrett Lynn, 999. Cheers. Great stuff, Ed. You're a legend. Thank you very much for that. So we're up, we're up to 30 bucks now. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Doc Boggs has some real simple stuff. Uh, stuff Uncle Dave Macon played is much harder than Doc Boggs stuff. Yeah, yeah. Dave Macon played like Claw Hammer, I think. Yeah. I might whip out the banjo on one of these. The things are so loud. I'd have to redo the sound and all that stuff. I, I, I got some, I got a couple of bluegrass banjos, like more modern banjos, and I got one that's like an open back from probably the 20s. One of the earliest videos on this channel is like me playing Little Maggie on the banjo, and you can't hear me singing because the, uh, the camera mic was just picking up all the banjo. Let's see. Gary Davis, Hesitation Blues. You should cover that song. I'm working on Samson and Delilah. Delilah like the, uh, the, the vocals are a pain in the ass to it. Steve kind of looks like Larry the Cable Guy, to be honest. Are you, are you talking about this C6 Steve guy? Shit. Where can I find your booking info? My city is in South Carolina. Does a blues concert every 4th of July. Well, uh, you can email me. Uh, you, you can look at um, possibly the description of this video or like the, the previous few videos and find my email on there. Shoot me something. Sir, what are your thoughts on James Taylor compositions, uh, especially uh, the Mud Slim album? I didn't listen to too much James Taylor. My mom did. But I mean, I, I, all I know by him is like the hits, you know. Where are you at in South Carolina, by the way? If you don't mind saying on the internet. Shady Grove was first published in a songbook in 1914, um, I think, but it was written sometime in the late 1880s. Oh, okay. So, yeah, might, might not be as old as I thought. My banjo's a 1890 Buckbee. Damn, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I've I, I've uh, I've seen a few like from that period. The one I got is like from the twenties, I believe. Let's see. Uh, I belong to the band is another another good one by Gary Davis. He had a lot of good stuff. He was a hell of a guitar player. James Taylor Steamroller Blues. Hmm. You talk, is that that song that Elvis covered? The drummer Steamroller Baby. <laughs> Blythewood, Northeast Richland County. Okay, so that's like um, maybe maybe an hour from me. So that's that's definitely doable. I had a six-string banjo. For, are you talking about one of those uh, guitar-style banjos? Yeah, I never played one of those. I, all mine are five strings. It's silver and brass inlays, and the pot is made out of brass. So talking about the 1890 banjo. Damn, yeah, the one I got is like all wood. Well, except the uh, you know the rim of the drums metal, but. Yeah, the band band guitar they call it. <laughs> you ever seen a band dobro? They they got like um they got a banjo that's like a like a resonator, 
you know, but with five strings on it. Got any hidden harmonica skills, Ed? Oh, you, you must have not been here last time. Like, I, I demonstrated um, that I completely suck at blowing. <laughs> here's the... Here's the harmonica right here. Can't can't play a damn thing on it. <laughs> I watched a video on, on Stu Mac. Uh, they stringed old acoustics with gut strings, strings made of animal guts. Yeah, that, that that's what they had before nylons. Yeah, they make them out of a. Uh, out of guts. <laughs> Let's see. Papa Papa Charlie Jackson played on a six string banjo. Okay. I've seen a uke resonator. Yeah, I've seen one of those before. That never owned a ukulele though. It says L O L that's that's okay. I never got the hang of the jaw harp either. Do I wait, do I have my do I have my jaw harp here? Oh, here it is. Keep a bunch of stuff in this drawer here. It's filthy. I'm going to get a disease from this thing. It's not very loud. Got, got my dad's old pitch pipe. This is this is what he tuned the guitar with. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, so did Gary Davis, which is where I saw it first. Uh, Talking about um, what was he talking about? Uh, hmm. Talking about Gary Davis playing a six-string banjo. Jaw harps can be painful to play. Yeah, and they uh, get crap in your mouth. Yeah, <laughs> when they've been sitting in a drawer for five years. Banjo first came from uh, Africa, made with a pot made out of a gourd, which uh, would usually a goat hide on it uh, with some hardwood, fretless neck, and they had very, very thick gut strings on them. Yeah, like um, the, uh, the the guy that made banjo popular in the United States was a guy named Joel Sweeney, and uh, he, he got it from the, uh, the slaves that was, were on his plantation in Virginia. And uh, he, he actually traveled all around America playing the banjo in Europe. This is like before the Civil War, you know. See, banjo originated in Africa, came to the US, West with slaves. Yeah, 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 certainly did. Sonny Boy Williamson was a great harmonica player. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good old blues guy. Like he, he was on some of those uh, films where they brought all those guys over to Britain, like, wasn't he? Like with Hal and Wolf and all them. Yeah, hey, let's... Let's play let's play another song or two. Hell. Fuck. I might try to do cannonball rag, see if I don't fuck it up too bad. Somebody was asking me for some yeah, Gizmodus was asking me for some uh some rag earlier. This is kind of a rag. I'll do some finger picking. Let me turn this air conditioner off.
That was called the Need New Guitar Strings Rag. Uh, let me see. Uh, Junior Wells, James Cotton. This is stuff I could stand to learn. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty sure he did minstrel shows. Uh, they talking about Joel Sweeney, yeah. He says thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you for that super chat earlier. Let's see. Funny you got the AC running. It's going to be thirty-seven degrees in Maine tonight. Well, I wish I was in Maine. I'd rather it be cold than hot as hell. It's, it's actually not too bad here right now. I mean, it, it was only like 80 today. It says, what strings do you like? Um, uh, I, I like Martin acoustic uh, lights, like uh, on a regular guitar. On a slide guitar, I use Martin mediums. Little Walter as well for harmonica, of course. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he played the shit out of one. I wish I could play one. It's, uh, ne never was it good with any kind of, um, like, wind instrument, you know. Do you play better sober or while drinking? Uh, well, uh, when I'm drinking, I sound better to myself, but, I, <laughs> I mean, that's probably an illusion. Depends on what it is. I mean, um, you know, if you're playing easy stuff, um, then loosening up a little bit with a few beers, you know, helps. But uh, if you're playing something really hard, uh, you know, alcohol is going to completely fuck you up. Especially on a banjo. I could not play a banjo with, you know, too much alcohol in my system. It says, dang, TT, it's going to be 29 in California? What? You must be in Northern California. See, all of us here outside of California think the entire state of California is Los Angeles, basically. It's like, you know how Americans suck at geography? We, we even suck at American geography. Play the hard stuff at the top of the show, yeah. You, you play an easy one or two to warm up, and then you throw something difficult in there, you know, once you're warmed up. Maybe 29 Celsius. <laughs> yeah. I think that's about what it gets here. I, I, I had to I had to get used to Celsius because my wife is from China and they use that that communist shit over there, you know. <laughs> I had to get used to liters and meters and all that nice stuff. Which was, well, I, I learned a lot of that stuff taking physics though. It's all communism. I like fucking Fahrenheit and feet and inches. It says, yep, by the Oregon border. Okay, yes, they're up there up north, yeah. Full of fruits and nuts. What is? Uh, no, 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 California, you mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah I, yeah, I just got the joke. It like <laughs> it went over my head. Have you ever bust on the street? Oh, yeah, I've, I've done a little bit of that, like especially when I was younger. You know, I'd uh, I'd go to like touristy areas, and you know, like if or if I was on vacation in Myrtle Beach or somewhere, you know, I'd set up and play. 
I did make a few bucks. Says, yes, sir. You mentioned Malaysia being in the Pacific. He, he oh yeah, I bet it's pretty hot there. Do you have any stories about performing on stage where you messed up? Uh, well, I, I I fuck up something at every show. Like I like I made some mistakes today. You know, usually lyrical things. Like um, but a lot of guitar mistakes too. You know, you just kind of. You just kind of look past them and hope nobody notices. Let's see. Um, gallons and pints. Yeah, yeah, I like those. Yeah. Maybe. Fuck them leaders. But a well, leader is like basically a quart, though. Like, but. Says, damn right, mercy, brother. <laughs> America, America, brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I remember when uh, when George W. Bush was president. But that's when we started calling it America. America's gonna stand strong. Don't mess with Texas. I'm decent enough to hide my mistakes while playing on stage, but I have some horror stories about my BAM mates messing up. Oh yeah, if if you want to see um like a public spectacle, like uh come see one of my bands. Uh, you know when when somebody makes a big fuck up, I turn around and they go, "You goddamn it, I'm gonna fucking murder you!" <laughs> like I'm I'm pretty public about it. I like I don't you know. I think it's entertaining. What's your dream acoustic guitar? Um, hmm. I don't have a particular one that I dream about. I have, I have a preference for Martins. Um, like um, some stuff I like to use, like a Dreadnought, you know, a little bigger and louder. If a finger picking, I actually like a, a smaller one. Let's look, I got that Auditorium uh, Dreadnought in the house. No, I mean, uh, that Auditorium Martin in the house. I, I, I like that guitar. It's a, what's a sustainable wood series or something. That, that, that's on loan. It's not mine. I, I tell you what I, I would like is a like a damn uh, national resonator from the 30s. I got a friend that's got one. Two of them, actually. <laughs> Freedom fries, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> France was opposed to the war in Iraq, and uh, so there were like some uh, some crazy restaurant owners that were like, "We're not selling French fries anymore. We're we're selling freedom fries." <laughs> Shit, that 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 whole post nine eleven period was insane. Like, I, I mean. I had just reached adulthood when that happened. I, I was 18 when 9-11 happened, so I got to see all that stuff. I had buddies that got sent over to the war, you know, and didn't come back uh, the way they the way they were before they were sent over there. So you can order a half a liter of beer or a pint, which is better. Um, well, so, so I'm not a, a goddamn communist i'm gonna order a pint <laughs> let's see you have to be like bb king and make a wrong note sound intentional by playing it multiple times in a row <laughs> I, I think i've tried that before <laughs> or, or a lot of times like if i'm doing a solo and i hit something i don't like i'll just like bend the string as quick as i can and try to get up to the right note National Tricone, yeah, I, I believe uh, believe that's what my buddy has. I think he's got two of those. I, I've been wanting to get those on a video. I got to get him down here with, with one or two of them. If you make a mistake, do it again. People will think you're a genius, Ace Freely. 
Yeah. I mean, you just I mean, most of the times the audience don't uh, don't notice mistakes unless they're incredibly egregious. But uh, everybody on stage notices them. I moved to NYC two weeks before they came down. Uh, got to watch it from my window. Talking about uh, about Kiss. Oh, oh no, no, the the nine eleven. That's what he's talking about. <laughs> like, oh damn, yeah, that that's pretty crazy. Yeah, that that was a Tuesday morning. I was passed out in a uh, some girl's apartment in Augusta. Uh, from a punk show the night before, and the the band was actually staying with us. It was a chick band called the Applicators from Virginia. And this girl, I'm staying with her mom, like um, busting the doors, like, "Wake up! We're under attack! Turn on the TV!" <laughs> and then that that was my introduction to 9/11. I think I think I got to see the second one fall live. He says, um, I I know S S R V was in a don't mess with Texas ad in the late eighties. They they had ads for that. <laughs> Shit. Is is it just me or is Robert Johnson's recording quality a lot better than other artists from the era of blues? Um I uh, you know I'm pretty sure that uh, they they got some of his master discs, and that, that's why they sound good. Like some of the aluminum master discs. I I mean, you don't quote me on that, but I th- I think they got those. Now the Catfish Blues that I played earlier. If you listen to the original Robert Petway recording of that, I mean, it almost sounds modern. It's just the best recording I've ever heard from that time. Let's see. I think you would prefer a national Dulian single cone. It's louder and dirtier sounding than the tricones. Yeah, it could be. I mean, I I played the ones that my my friend had. You know, they they sound pretty good. You know, uh, they they're they're from the '30s, so they don't stay tuned, of course. But. <laughs> Worked in a liquor store on 9-11. Sold a lot of booze that day. Well, a bit. Shit. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, Yeah, that that whole period was just crazy. Like I, <laughs> I remember watching that concert they did for nine eleven. Had all those people like the Who and Paul McCartney and stuff. Can you do some Scrapper Blackwell? Um, I'd have to learn one. Yeah, he, he was good. Uh, good finger picking type of like Piedmont guy. At least had that that sound, you know. So I watched Brooklyn get engulfed in smoke and ash. Yeah, that that must have been fucking crazy to like actually be there. My buddy works at National in uh, San Luis Obispo, California. I could ask for a deal on a 1930s National shit. Yeah, they they're pretty expensive, like the used ones. Yeah, well, they're well, of course they're used. They're from the '30s, but it's like you know, and they, those old Stellas from the '20s cost a lot too. Wasn't even alive when 9/11 happened. Yeah, yeah, that's what blows my mind. Like, uh, there are people who are adults now that that weren't alive when it happened, and I was an adult when it happened.
So yeah, all you boomers out there who hated Richard Nixon, um, yeah, George W. Bush is my Richard Nixon. So. <laughs> Saw papers flying in the air. For, yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, that was a big thing. Yeah, you saw all the like all that office paper flying around. Yeah. I think they're about four thousand bucks from the thirties. Yeah, that sounds about right. They they were pretty expensive back then, like for the time too. Like that that's why a lot of guys just didn't have them back then. You know, they they were playing like the cheapest shit they could find. What's Trump then? Uh, Trump would be uh, <laughs> like. Uh, if anything, the most entertaining president ever, you know, what wasn't really into him, didn't vote for him, didn't vote for Hillary either, by the way. I voted third party. Like, I couldn't stand either of them. He, um, definitely entertaining. Didn't get anybody killed. Like, I mean, at least, um, nobody from here. Like, I, I, I was kind of happy about that. He didn't, like, get us into any stupid wars. You know, I thought he would. You know, when he had, like, John Bolton, like, uh, whispering in his ear and stuff. I think we'll do another porter. Give me some more super chats. I'll try to kill the rest of that moonshine jug over there. <laughs> I don't know what's in it, but... Let's see, uh, ever got in a fight during a gig? Close. Well, I, I, I bitch slapped a guy one time who was fucking with my guitar, my 70s Les Paul, while I was playing a solo. Like, he got down on his knees and started, like, messing with my strings while I was playing. I just went, whap, you know, just slapped the shit out of him. Um, yeah, about a year or two ago, I was playing, uh, Somewhere and uh, some really really drunk guy tried to jump on my sound dude. I th think my sound guy like smarted off at him or something. And I, I, I once I figured out what was going on, I got over there like, hey motherfucker, goddamn it! And then somebody got between us. I think it was like one of the guys from the bar. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's as close as I ever got. He says, what is he drinking? This, this is a Founders Porter, American Porter from uh, Michigan, apparently. <coughs> oh, bro. Um, let's see. Highway 61 makes pretty good resonator guitars for cheap. Okay, I haven't heard of them. I got that Morgan Monroe for like three something, I believe. I bought it new at a music store. Let's see. I was thousands of miles away when nine eleven happened and watched it on TV. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was down here in the South watching it. Uh, I'd have to agree with that about Trump being entertaining, psycho, but entertaining. Yeah, he he definitely was. <laughs> Shit. Uh, let's see. Um, Here's one for your parlor guitar, Jim Jackson. Mike could learn some. I, I I have to pull out the parlor guitar one of these days. This is just a pain in the ass to play. It's got like terrible action on it. Let's see. Uh, when you play acoustic live, do you use a use onboard electronics on the board or amp or just mic it? 
Um, well, a lot of these small rooms I'm playing, mic and stuff is just out of the question, like an acoustic. You have to be in a pretty big space or outside to mic an acoustic, so I, I use acoustic electrics. Let's see. Uh, this is WAP. <laughs> you, you ever thought about covering Muddy Waters? I'd be trouble. A great slag guitar song. Yeah, I might look that one up. I mean, I, there's a lot of muddy I do with the band. I do champagne and reefer and um, oh, uh, mojo working. We we do um, uh, you know what? Uh, I'm ready. Let's see. My buddy Josh is like a muddy waters fanatic. Like he he always makes sure we do a lot of them. What's some of those other ones? Let's see. We do, um, ooh, uh, I can't even think of my own set list. <laughs> Let's see. Hey, Edward, I'm perfectly drunk, and you're here, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, drink up, man. I'm an adult, and I wasn't alive for 9-11 either. Shit, man. It, yeah, that that blows my mind. Yeah, there's grown people now that weren't alive then. I, this makes me feel old. <laughs> That's some dark beer. I'm having some Coors Yellow Jackets, working man's beer. Hey, Coors is a good, you know, kind of light American lager. Yeah, this uh, this is Porter. This is about the darkest beer you can get. Then you got Stouts, which is just another version of Porter. But yes, yeah, basically black. I think if you if you hold it up to a light, like so, sometimes you can see a little bit of ruby red in it. You know, Shout out from South Texas, Texas Blues. Oh, yeah, they had some good shit from there. Had Lightning Hopkins at SRV, you know. That old T-Bone Walker was from there originally. Awesome channel. I appreciate that. Highway 61 sells slotted headstock, brass, or steel-bodied uh, resonators for 800 bucks. Sounds great. That's, that's not a bad price for a metal resonator. You might want to look into travel guitars. They're about parlor-sized. Yeah, I've, I've played a couple. I think I played a travel-sized Martin one time. You have an interesting story you'd share about your playing a gig or your being on the road. Well, there's a lot of them. Let me <laughs> um, just, um, I mean, I've I played so many different kinds of like gigs, you know. I mean, um, I, I, I could start a whole podcast just telling stories, you know. Play, play, places like um, you'd never expect to see like, you know, some guy playing blues and shit. Like I, I played at a Filipino birthday party. I, I played, I played at yeah, like Cinco de Mayo last Thursday at a Mexican place. <laughs> I don't know any of the music they listen to, but um, I, I guess they got into it. Um, let me see. He says, I feel so old now. <laughs> I was born in 2005. I'm 16. Oh, okay. Damn, yeah. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I thought I was getting old about 2005. And it, well, I was only in my 20s, but I, you know, you got that like, I'm a quarter century old now. I've seen everything. <laughs> See, IPA, he says, uh, yeah, I mean, they've gotten worn out on me. I mean, um, it used to be, at least around here, like an IPA was like a really special kind of thing. You couldn't get them anywhere, and it was cool to get one. And, um, you know, now, of course, like everybody and their mother makes an IPA. 
And um, I, I only drink them every now and then because I, I just they just kind of wear my palate out if it tastes too much like a pine tree. Sir, you look like Richie Blackmore with your new cowboy hat. <laughs> he's, he's doing like medieval music and stuff now, isn't he? Opinions about the Doors. Love the Doors. I, I like their uh, like their first few albums. Like I, I think my favorites are Waiting for the Sun. And then, you know, their first album was really good. And the second one, um, like a L.A. Woman, um, that that one, um, th- that one never impressed me much. That that, that was kind of when Jim Morrison started turning into your dad or something, right? <laughs> uh, Soft Parade wasn't too much into that one either. I mean, it was kind of cool. They tried the horns, but um, it didn't work for me. But, uh, yeah, huge Doors fan. I mean, um yeah, that was always big on Jim Morrison. That that was my main thing with rock. Like I was into like sixties rock, and psychedelic stuff. Let's see. I was thirty eight when they went down. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm I'm thirty nine now. I used to like a good black and tan. Oh, yeah, I used, to, I used to make those sometimes. I'd get like a giant spoon and pour the Guinness over it. IB's Trouble is, is the same Muddy Water song as I, I Can't Be Satisfied, just recorded acoustically earlier by Lomax. Well, yeah, he he did a lot of stuff that was pretty much the, the same music with um, different lyrics over it. El- Elmore James was bad about that, too. Um, Robert Johnson had a few that were pretty much the same. Like, like Terra, Terra Plain Blues was um, pretty close to Crossroads, you know, stuff like that. Um, Blind Lemon Jefferson was from Waco. Oh, yeah, probably the first Texas bluesman, the, the first uh, country bluesman to be really famous. He kind of opened the whole thing up as far as, like, the, uh, you know, the man with acoustic thing like back in the 20s. It's 1960 here. Okay, but my old man was born in 59. So you're about his age. I'm pretty sure Mance Linscombe was from Texas too. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, they they had a lot of good stuff out of Texas. I hear IPA gives a man ED. Well, all alcohol does that to me, I think. Um, have you ever played slash thought about a, a square neck dobro? Well, yeah, it's kind of funny because I, you know, I grew up with a lot of bluegrass music and that's what they use. Never owned one, never even tried one. But I mean, you, you can't just, um, flip one up and play it like a guitar. You know, there's no way to do that. You just strictly like, you know, on your lap and you have slide playing and stuff. You own a uh, ukulele. You don't have to answer if you do, uh, if you don't want to. No, no, I I have never owned a ukulele. I I think I've played one once or twice, maybe. Like I, I I wouldn't know what to do with one. Like maybe like uh, do music for an insurance commercial or something. <laughs> um. What else? Uh, Jim wasn't evil. <laughs> yeah, he was just crazy. He's talking about Jim Morrison. <laughs> um, personal question and answer if you like or not. Do you make a living play music and gigging or do you have a day job? Right now, I, I just do nothing but music. You know, I mean... Um, I live a pretty pretty slim down lifestyle. I don't have a lot of like really big bills or anything like that, so I can afford to do it. Let's see. I can't believe how much those early musicians changed the world with their music. Yeah, well I mean, um if you talk about um you know, like this pre war blues 
you know, that's kind of like uh, for American music, like um, it is, it's kind of like um, having a recording of the Big Bang or something. It's, you know, it's where, you know, you get all these, these more modern forms like rock and roll and stuff. And we actually have a lot of this stuff on record. Hey, Edward, big fan from the uh, Ar Arcolatex. Or, uh, where's that at? Resonator mandolins, cool or weird? I never played one. I've, I've seen them before. I, I mean, um, I don't think I've ever seen anybody playing one in a band. It would be cool to try one one day. EVH's dad played ukulele. Oh, okay. I, th I thought they were like a kind of a classical music family or something. Resonator mandolins sound insane. <laughs> I bet they do. <laughs> Does YouTube pay well? Asking for a friend, LOL. Well, yeah, I mean, um, if you can get like a good good hit video every now and then, you know, you can make some pretty good money. Um I've actually done pretty well with these live streams. Uh, this one tonight's like pretty pretty slim pickings for me. I made like thirty bucks, <laughs> but uh, like the, the past two weeks, I made over a hundred bucks. You know, it's just like doing a gig. <laughs> Sooner or later, you're gonna hit a hit it big. You have an awesome voice. I try to have an awesome voice. I'm not. I'm not that much of a singer. I mean, uh, I, I just sing because I've always had to. Like I was always the guy in the band that sang. You know, the border between Texas, Louisiana, and Arkansas. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of a lot of good blues going on down there, or that went on down there back in the day. I've actually been to Blind Lemon's grave, went there and cleaned it off his grave. Oh, cool. <laughs> I've seen Robert Johnson in Blind Willie's graves. Where, where's Blind Lemon buried at? Let's see, Tweety Kid sends $5 and sent me an animation. Thank you very much for that. Appreciate all the super chats y'all seeing. Says my brother, oh, no, my, my mother would have loved you, bro. I'm certain. Oh yeah, man. I was she a big blues fan. You have your Gretsch available. I ain't got it on me right now. I'd have to mic up an amp and all that stuff. I might bring that out for a live, uh, like a live stream one of these days. Did you do like an all electric one or something? Le uh, Lead Billy grew up near where I'm at, so, so that would be uh, Louisiana. Not sure where I'm at, but I guarantee you Texarkana ain't a mile from Louisiana. Okay. <laughs> oh, that was what you were saying earlier, like the, the border be between Texas and Louisiana. And okay, yeah. Wortham, Texas, a little outside of Waco, six hours for me. Oh, okay. Yeah. I still haven't put up that, that picture, like, of, uh, of Robert Johnson's grave. Like, I'd have to put that up on, uh, like, on my channel, like, um, on the community whatever post thing. Says Cannibal Rag was great. I'm inspired to learn that now. Thank you. Yeah, that's that one's a pain in the ass to learn right there. That that's one of the few songs that I've ever looked up tabs for. Actually, I got had to have have a little help from tabs. Ten chat videos, five bucks. Thank you very much for that, sir. If you want to know how to leave a super chat, there's a little dollar sign at the bottom of your screen. 
Like um like right below the chat. Yeah. You got a favorite bluegrass song and would you play it for us? I tell you what, um well, I'll do some Bill, I'll have to buy some Blue Moon in Kentucky. I don't think I can sing it in his key. But uh, I'll smoke this here, you know, get some nicotine in my system. I'll I'll play that one for y'all. Always like stone walls and steel bars. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, I think I did that on a live one one time. Do you like her in Horton Heat? Yeah, I I actually had a chance to see him one time. He, he came to the punk club that I used to go to in, in uh, Augusta. It's called the Capri Cinema. And um, yeah, he came down there one night, and I did not make it out there. So uh, September, I'm going to the Mississippi Blues Trail, wanting to play on the stage at Dockery Farms. That's the one place I didn't get to go when I went to Mississippi. I didn't get to see Dockery Farms. But, uh, yeah, be sure to check out the Shack Up Inn. The, uh, that's the hotel in Clarksdale. That's the coolest fucking place to stay you've ever seen in your life. Uh, you know, going down south, I probably got no lyrics. Like, you uh, yeah. Always them damn lyrics. Yeah, let me get this cigarette done. I'll, I'll play y'all a bluegrass tune. My mother would have let you crash on the couch if you got too drunk. But you had to go to sleep with Pink Floyd. <laughs> well, they they had a lot of slow stuff, like on Dark Side of the Moon. I probably could have passed out to that. You ever heard of Tuba Skinny? They're not blues, but they're old rag blues. No, I'd have to have to check that out. To look that up. It says I've been playing heart for forty years. Sure, wish we could get together someday and uh, play a song or two. I've actually had several harmonica players show up at my gigs, and I'd let them on stage and play a couple. Some good ones, some bad ones, but all better than me because I can't play one. Let's see. There it says, Air Old Rag Jazz. Okay. So, like, talking about, like, kind of like 20s jazz. Says, sorry, had a bit of Guinness in me. <laughs> Henry Thomas Bulldoze Blues. I have to look that one up. Yeah. See if I can find that one. Check it out. TT five bucks. Thank you very much for that. Says thanks, Ed. Keep it going, man. Uh, five bucks get you a pack of Lucky Strikes, <laughs> Hellhounds, or Robert J to top off the show. Might be able to do a Robert Johnson. I can, um, if, you know, Robert Johnson song if I can remember the lyrics to one. Um, I ain't got none on hand right now, but I, I can probably remember the lyrics to Steady Rolling Man. Or might be able to do Crossroads or something. R.L. Burnside's first recording is one of my favorite albums. <laughs> he had some good shit. Motherfucker stole my check. Stole my check. Tuba Skinny's more Dixieland jazz, I think. My friend that plays in the uh, the Mummers Parade in Philly played tenor banjo for them a few times, I think. I used to have a tenor banjo, but I, I didn't like it because I you can't play three finger style on them. They don't have that drone string on them, you know. Let's see, it's going up. It's going up the country by Can Heat Original. Uh, going up the country is actually from the twenties. Like I can't remember the name of the guy that did it, but um, yes, yeah, he's got like a guy playing a recorder on there, like um, old recording from the twenties. Uh, 
what do you think of Zip's version of When the Levee Breaks? Well, um, they they definitely made it their own. Like that, it was actually pretty awesome. I, I, I like that. Uh, I like that John Bonham like drum sound they got on that record. Yeah, I got my obligatory copy of Led Zeppelin IV down there in the record collection. All right, let's 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 do a couple songs. Yeah. Fucking mic stands. I got to get my capo. <laughs> I, I I got to have a capo to do these bluegrass songs, right? Could y'all give me just one second to run and get it? Okay. Been a while since I sang this one. Stay tuned. Capos do funny things to the tuning. That's good enough. Shining bright, and they whispered from on high. Your lover said goodbye. 
goodbye Blue moon up in Tucky Keep on shining Fuck Shine on the one that's gone And said goodbye There's a Bill Monroe there for you I got to do a video on um, yeah, meeting Mr. Monroe. I, I got pictures of it and stuff. <clears throat> yeah, while I'm at it, I'll sing my other favorite bluegrass songs, uh, Stanley Brothers. Stone Walls and Steel Bars. I got to meet uh, Ralph Stanley, too, actually, when I was a kid. Somebody, uh, somebody wanted to hear some more Robert Johnson earlier. I think I'll play one in standard while I got this guitar. What happened to my thumb pick? Being stingy with them super chats tonight. Bitch, give me my damn money. I'm a steady rolling man, and I roll both night and day. I'm a steady rolling man. I'm a hard one. 
working man Have been for many long years Some cream puff using my money But it'll never happen no more Can't give your woman Everything she wants at just one time Everything she wants at just one time She's got a rambling on her brain, baby And a monkey man on her mind I'm a steady rolling man And I roll both night and day I'm a steady rolling man And I roll both night and day Crossroad Blues. I went to the crossroad. Pass me by. straight sinking down that's the one that pretty much made this channel <laughs> like the video I did at Crossroads That thing might be getting up on a million views at this point. 
mic stands. I need to get one of those fucking like Backstreet Boys, uh, you know, headset mics. See, thy Lord root five bucks. Thank you very much for that. Got me and the devil blues in you. Uh, I could do that one. Yeah. Let's see. I think I can remember the lyrics of that. And Garrett Lynn 499 says, super chat this man. All right. Yeah. I appreciate that. Let's, let's go ahead and do me and the devil. Yeah. See, we got a couple more super chats here. We got a, uh, let's see, Garrett Lynn 499. Oh, I read that one earlier. Well, thank you for that, man. Uh, Chad Thompson, $10. He says, thank you with an animation. Appreciate that a lot. Pull my my video up back here. Okay, yeah. All 
Did you sell your soul, Edward? Yes, to Google. <laughs> uh, let me see. Uh, where the hell is the trail, damn it? <laughs> uh, real deal here, fellas. Thank you very much. I'd be more comfortable playing around a campfire with a few beers. It, it's a little less nervous uh, playing around a campfire than it is uh, streaming live on the internet where your every fuck up becomes permanent record. Sell your soul to Susan soon. Yeah, yeah, Susan Wojcicki owns my soul. What do you think about Freddie King? He Well, he, he was always uh, my favorite out of the three kings, actually. I, I liked his guitar playing the best. It had a slight edge for me. Um, like, I, I do Hideaway with uh, one of my bands. That's amazing you light your cigs with a candle lighter. Yeah, my other lighter broke. <laughs> like, yeah, I got this, yeah, this damn grill lighter here. Well, that, hell, there's my, I didn't even see that. I got my, like, cigar lighter here. That, oh, that's working. Yeah. See, it says feeling kind of. This says I had homey or horny, like homey. Okay, good. <laughs> One of the things I regret is uh, I kept on telling myself that BB King would live forever and never got to see him in person. Yeah, I, I did the same thing. Like a. Uh, I I always wanted to go see BB. Like my dad always talked about us going, you know, when he was alive. And uh, like I was kind of um, iffy about bringing him into an arena that was going to be full of black people because he was like a drunk redneck and stuff. So <laughs> I never got to go. How do you feel about uh, Yoko Ono singing with Chuck Berry? Uh, now that that might have been the least rock and roll moment of Chuck Berry's entire life. <laughs> that, that was kind of cool, like when John Lennon had him on the, uh, was it the uh, Tonight Show that he guest hosted on? Mike Douglas. Oh, okay. Yeah. How do you feel about the Beach Boys? Love the Beach Boys. I, I was always a big Pet Sounds guy just for the, the musicality of it, you know. Um, I mean, in recent times, though, I've actually gotten more into their early, you know, silly pop stuff. I can find, oh, I see it right there. Yes, I've been listening to it, so it's on top of the stack. Yeah. Beach Boys' greatest hits. And I mean, um, you know, the the Beatles were beating the Beach Boys in sales, but um, Brian Wilson definitely beat the Beatles as far as uh, musical complexity. I feel fortunate for seeing Big Mama Thornton do nothing but a hound dog. Damn, that's pretty damn cool. How long ago was that?
Yeah, I reckon Pet Sounds is everybody's favorite Beach Boys album. Well, it's just almost like a classical piece if you think about it. Sergeant Pepper was the answer to Pet Sounds. Yeah, it, like the, the songwriting on Sergeant Pepper was better, of course, because it was the Beatles. But um, it didn't um, it didn't really reach Pet Sounds as far as um, just complexity. And that would be my favorite Beatles album, of course, Sergeant Pepper. Do I, do I have that handy? Oh, there, yep, there it is. Yeah, I got that. <laughs> this is not an original one. It's, I think it's from the 70s. And it's falling apart and skipping and stuff, too. Let's drink to beautiful mothers. Oh, yes, Mother's Day. Let's see, he says, I love the Beach Boys. Uh, grew up a Beatle maniac. Took me a while to appreciate the Beach Boys. I mean, they, they Brian Wilson was a hell of a composer, man. Let's see, I I pet I pet I know I I apathetic it. <laughs> ten ten bucks, no words, just love. Thank you very much for that. What you drinking on, Ed? This is a this right here is a, is a Founders Porter, American Porter from Michigan. Or somebody told me earlier it was from Michigan. I said I would hit the corn liquor earlier, like if I got a few super chats. I guess I, guess I have to now, huh? Now, now what is this stuff? This is store-bought stuff, unfortunately. Uh, Platte Valley 100% straight corn whiskey from Montana? Okay, or is that Missouri? I... <laughs> Shit needs to come from the south, man. All right. How much is in there? Oh, there's some in there. You should show off your vinyl collection in a video. Get the vinyl nerds in here. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's not um, it, it's not anything to die for. Like I, you know, I, I got some um, got a couple of cool blues records. I got uh, I got some original Beatles from the '60s. But I mean, it's it's definitely not like vinyl nerd level. I would just pick shit up from flea markets or some some older guy would give me their records. They didn't want them anymore, just things like that, you know. As soon as I win the lottery, Ed. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, you drink two of those and it's like drinking a bottle of wine. The founder... But the founders, does it have a lot of alcohol in it? Uh, oh, six point five. Okay, yeah, that's more than I thought. Huh. I thought it was about five something. My first concert was Beach Boys and Roy Orbison. I was a kid and remember every minute. Well, damn, that, that's a damn sight better than my first concert. Like I, <laughs> I saw the damn Yankees. Like I was like ten, nine or ten, something like that. Um, 
M O is Missouri. Okay, this liquor's from Missouri. It does say M O on it. Montana's M T. Okay. He's been drinking on it a wee bit, it seems. Uh, yeah, yeah. M most of this thing's gone. Like I've, I've been working on it for a couple of weeks. That that Glenn Levitt I had last time, I killed that. Ever try Mississippi mud? Buddy bought some over. Uh, I never tried that. What was that? Was that a beer? I think my first one I got swindled into going to was a Christian contemporary concert. Oh, no. <laughs> ne never had to go to one of those. He says, yeah, not a good experience. <laughs> that that stuff was really big in the 90s, and I had friends who you know, would try to drag me to church with them and hear some band and stuff. I'm like, ah, man, I'm good. Yeah. My first concert was Weird Al in 98 at the county fair. Oh, shit. I, I wish I could see Weird Al live. Love Roy. Oh, yeah, Roy Orbison, man. Let's see. You hear there's an award out for Christian contemporary artists for discovering a key outside of C major. Yeah, yeah, they they were always real like real happy and uplifting with their music. Like ne never sounded like they were pissed off at anything. <laughs> uh, I, uh, yeah. Come to think of, or, uh, or Creed, like I always considered Creed a Christian band. They, they were always in drop D I think, weren't they? Not good. That, that, that late nineties Creed crap, like that, that's what drove me to, punk like and you know my all my friends were listening to punk and stuff it was 1984 when i saw big mama probably close to one of her last concerts sacramento oh okay yes yeah, see, I, I didn't know she lived that long my first concert was neil diamond <laughs> huh I've had to sing Sweet Caroline with bands before. Well, I didn't sing it. I played it. We had a singer. I'm your big fan from Sydney and always wondered, uh, how did how did you get started or get into blues? I got into blues uh, back when I was in high school. I, I was listening to, like, a lot of psychedelic rock and, um, you, you know, like um, Hendrix and Cream and stuff like that and... Uh, I just kind of started wondering, like, the kind of stuff that they were influenced by, and so I picked up some blues stuff. I had, I went out and bought the CD for Robert Johnson's complete recordings. I, like, uh, I got a Muddy Waters tape and a John Lee Hooker tape, and that's, that's how I got started with blues. And, you know, weird thing, my dad, like, uh, watched the Blues Brothers movie a lot when I was, a, like, a little kid. Like, that was one of the few movies that he had... Um, but the attention span to watch. He didn't really like movies, but <laughs> we saw that movie like a hundred times. My first concert was Bad Company in 1974. Ah, okay, yeah. Uh, I used to I used to play the what, what is it? Uh, the Sky is Burning by um, by Bad Company with a band. Like, and I, I could barely sing it because you know that. That damn, um, oh, what's his name? Um, anyway, the yeah, singer for Bad Company is really hard to sing. <laughs> it says, oh, damn, I'm jealous. <laughs> He says, oh, yeah, that's true. Creed kind of broke the mold with that. Yeah, all their songs were like in drop D. 
that damn that Scott Stapp, that oh, that motherfucker. I hated that guy's voice. Like he, he, it was like he was doing like a joke impression of Eddie Vedder. He was like, take me, you know, it's back in the nineties when everybody sang like that. Oh yeah. Let's see. Got to ask: Was the SRV a muse of yours? He, he definitely influenced me to a certain extent. I mean, um, I, I play a few of his songs with, uh, you know, the band and stuff. I play Cold Shot and um, Pride and Joy. I mean, definitely a lot of good blues licks to learn from him. He, he was very close to, like, Albert King. He did a lot of Albert King licks. In fact, um, growing up, I had heard of Stevie Ray Vaughan before I had heard of Albert King. And, um... Like um, like when when I heard Albert King, I was like, "Oh shit, that's the stuff Stevie Ray Vaughan is playing." Boston, nineteen seventy six in Pittsburgh. I saw a few classic rock bands live, you know, um, like I I saw I saw AC/DC in about ninety five or so. I think I was like twelve. I saw um, saw the Almond Brothers right around the same time. Seen Nugent a few times, including with uh, you know with the damn Yankees in by himself. Paul Rogers, that's the singer for Bad Company. Okay, yeah, thanks, Daryl. I grew up thinking Bad Company was American because they they had like an American rock sound. Turns out they're British. Boston is the best rock debut album. You know, I don't listen to him much, but damn that that guy that guy that ran Boston, he was an MIT engineer, had a studio in his basement. He he made that fucking record in his basement. I mean, that's pretty damn admirable just the way that record was produced. It, it's one of the most immaculate productions of the 70s. Like that, that guy was like a total genius. SRV was badass, Rip. Yeah, he definitely. He, I mean, um, he uh, he kind of put the Fender back on the map. Definitely, like um, the, the Stratocaster. Got killed in Eric Clapton's helicopter. Like uh, Eric Clapton's like bad luck. Like just people around him just die and stuff. Kind of corny, but did you see Nirvana? Nah, like um, wasn't quite old enough. I, I was well, I was eleven when Kurt Cobain died, and my dad wouldn't have gone to see him. That you know, that my dad was taking me to rock concerts back then. It's kind of a shame I didn't. I mean, uh, I really liked uh, Nirvana a lot. I, I remember uh, Kurt Cobain's death being announced on uh, MTV News. You know, with Kurt Loder. It, it was kind of like um. It's kind of like a where were you when uh, when John Kennedy got shot? Like <laughs> that's just kind of how it felt. Cause I, you know, I, I was listening to him while he was alive. Um, let's see, Life by the Drop is awesome. Nuge is cool. I always like seeing Nugent live, like just just some of the shit talk he, uh, you know, he had. Like he he would get on that mic and just start talking shit, and it was always funny. My question to you, Edward: Do you believe in uh, myth like blues legends like Robert Johnson, Jimmy Page sold their souls to the devil? Well, I, I don't really believe in anything supernatural. Uh, you you got to understand, um, back in the you know the twenties and thirties, uh, you talk about Robert Johnson and stuff. If you played blues music, uh, most uh, normal people considered you to be in league with the devil. That's where that whole thing comes from. Like, uh, Helen Wolf's mother, like, never 
talk to him till the till the day she died. Um, and it it kind of like uh, fucked with him and stuff, you know, because she she believed he was in league with the devil. I mean, you know, but before there was rock and roll, uh, blues was kind of the, the, you know, the the naughty stuff like the devil's music. Boston is definitely worth listening to, in my opinion. I, I, I've got, I've got, I think I got the first Boston record somewhere. It's not here, but it's somewhere on this property. It's like it's not in my stack down there. I might have to give that a good listen. I mean, um, yeah, that, that guy definitely was a like a sound engineering genius and a producing genius. Tom Schultz, yeah. Got any thoughts on Wings? Hey, great band, you know. I mean, it's um, it's, it's Paul McCartney without the uh, good counterbalance of John Lennon, but it's still Paul McCartney. So it's you know, it's good songwriting. It says, uh, yes, yeah, a damn shame. Uh, A F A I K S R V was clean and he died anyway yeah he'd cleaned his shit up i think didn't he yeah he used to drink a lot and snort coke this is a uh, hell all early rock is 12 bar anyway yes it's basically like um you know got a mix of blues and country and uh like 20s uh boogie woogie and you know things like that like the, the early like rockabilly stuff I mean, you, you can listen to Pine Top's Boogie uh, by Pine Top Smith from the 20s. That's basically a, a fucking rock and roll song from the 20s. And, of course, like Pine Top Perkins uh, covered it later than people thought he wrote it. And he says, who cares? The music is great. Yeah, that's, that's all that matters is, is the music great. What's your preferred acoustic brands, strings? I I prefer Martins. I use Martin strings, uh, usually a Martin light gauge. But if I'm playing a slide guitar, like I like mediums. So, right, SRV was messed up as fuck, and he gets clean, and then he dies in a freak accident. Shame for sure. Imagine, yeah, I'm not getting on any helicopters anytime soon. <laughs> That those things don't like musicians for some reason. You had uh, him and Otis Redding and like, uh, what? Well, then Buddy Holly died on a, like a little plane. Yeah. Um, let's see. Shame for sure. Imagine if SRV Hendrix Cobain lived to the uh, life expectancy. Maybe be a different live show tonight. Yeah, I mean. Um, I, I, it would have, would have really been interesting to see where any of those people had gone had they lived longer. I mean, um, Nirvana's late recordings, you know, right before he died, um, they they were starting to sound real interesting. Like, I, I think they they were getting ready to really piss off the, the normies and just kind of go back underground. In utero kind of did that a little. And... Uh, you know, Hendrix was kind of going more in like a almost a funk direction, you know, if you think about it. Uh, it no, no telling what SRV would be doing right now. You ever heard some baldy blues like Lucille Bogan? I, I don't think I'm familiar with Lucille Bogan. I got a Gretsch a while back, but I like my Washburn resonator. It's like Gretsch acoustic, I guess. It, I got a like an electric Gretsch. Yeah, that parlor guitar I got was made by the same people who came out with Washburn. It's you know Lion and Healy. What key were you in when playing Sweet on Chicago? That's that, that's just. Um, Standard tuning E.
SRV used to put Coke in his coffee just to get going each morning. He stopped uh, stopped walking on the street to puke. He stopped walking on the street to puke blood. That's when Tim and Tommy got him to clean up. Coke in your coffee. Well, I bet that beats sugar. <laughs> I just missed Stevie and had tickets. What, what year did he die? Like, was it 88, 89, something like that? Said, yeah, got me a Gretsch Streamliner. Oh, okay. Had to ask my old lady. She was like, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> my old lady bought me one. She got me an SG. She's like, yeah, you need to get rid of some of these guitars. I'm like, no, no. Here's a rough one. Who's your favorite blues artist? If you had to pick only one. Hmm. But I, I think on a desert island situation, like I, I'd probably go with Robert Johnson. And TT says uh, SRV died in 89. Okay. Yep. Have you ever watched any of Billy String's early videos? I promised y'all last week I was going to look him up, but I, like, I, I didn't. <laughs> so I, <laughs> um, I, I keep hearing that name a lot. So I will look the man up. Let's see. Any thoughts on Roy Buchanan? I don't know his work too well. Had to have to give his work a listen. I want a Gretsch with a Bigsby. Um, well, um, yeah, I mean, the Bigsby on the Gretsch, they don't. Um, you're not going to be doing any Frank Marino on that. They, they, they don't. That that uh, that tremolo don't go very low, and you will be retuning it if you use it. Says, ha ha. Yeah, I'm saying she she's like. Uh, Root, why are you bringing so much stuff up here? And uh, I also got a bunch of old computers. Yeah, I got a bunch of old computer shit, too. It's like, eh, get some of this junk out of here. I got all these damn guitars. And stuff. It's got kind of a pack rat. It said Billy Strings, mainly bluegrass. Okay, like, like, like the newer bluegrass guys I really don't listen to. Um, some of them use like too many chords and stuff. I, I, I like I like the old, um, you know, like Bill Monroe type stuff, just the uh, three chord stuff. Like a lot of the guys now are basically folk. I want a Gretsch uh, sixty one twenty. And what, is that a hollow body? I, that's the thing. I'm like a I'm not a guitar expert. Uh, believe it or not, like I, I don't even know like the numbers on uh you know like these martins i play and stuff like i have to look at them every time like double o double o x one a e i just kind of pick them up and play them the the, the gretch i got's an electromatic oh yeah they haven't poured this beer yet Let me see. Uh, Morning, Ed. Just wanted to say I'd be glad to tip you. I believe um, on channels like this, but Super Chat doesn't work from here. I live overseas. God, damn, that sucks. <laughs> well, thanks anyway, man. I appreciate it. 
loved your channel since I saw you do when the levee breaks. Oh, yeah, that was a pretty big one for me. Like I, that one kind of surprised me, actually. I, I guess it was like the Led Zeppelin tie-in that brought in a lot of people that watched that one. She doesn't get it. I ain't getting rid of my Commodore 128. <laughs> oh, God damn. That's an old-ass computer, ain't it? Let's see. Uh, burnt out your blind eyes, baby. Is that Robert Edward? Mm, that might be a lyric. I don't think that's a song. Uh, get the Reverend Horton Heat and Gretch. That, I'll bet that's one of them expensive ones, ain't it? Thoughts on Robert Plan of Zep uh, performing bluegrass on that album? He, he played with Alison Krauss, didn't he? I mean, it was interesting, you know. I mean, um, I believe I saw Allison Krauss a couple times, like when she was getting started, like when I was a kid, you know, would have been in like the 80s or early 90s. Billy Strings and Marcus King doing Summertime is, is worth listening to. Okay, yeah, I'm going to look that up. And he says, uh, Raising Sand, I think. Oh, okay. Brian Setzer plays the 6120. Okay, so that's that's got to be one of the bazillion dollar ones, yeah, with the TV Jones pickups and stuff. And then John Paul uh, sends me a, a beer emoji. Yeah, cheers. I never get used to these these cameras like it's backwards, you know, it's like being in a mirror. One thing I got to say is you turned me on to Sun House. Never listened to him before listening to this channel. Oh, yeah, you was missing a lot in there. Yeah, um, I was talking to a guy earlier in this chat um, who, who knows the guy that managed uh, Sun House back in the 60s, uh, Dick Waterman. I wonder if he's still here. Hang on. Hang on one second. All right. Oh, and Eddie Cochran played the same guitar. Yeah, that's that that one's gonna cost you like a million dollars. <laughs> Any thoughts on Jack White? Yeah, well, the White Stripes was probably the last, um, you know, contemporary band on the radio that I'd ever listened to. Like I think I'd seen them on MTV. I was like, well, that's actually pretty cool. Uh, let's see. What are your thoughts on the band The Devil Makes Three? I don't, I don't know too much about them. Sunhouse and Sonny Terry. A good combination. Jack White Blunder Bless album is great, in my opinion. Haven't heard that one. I haven't heard much of his stuff outside of the White Stripes. I just remember hearing them do a death letter. I'm like, God damn. And then they're doing like Blind Willie. Like, shit. And they're on MTV. <laughs> so that that was a step in the right direction. And uh, unfortunately, um, you know, it didn't go anywhere. <laughs> it's fucking MTV, man. Also, Jack White, Austin City Limits is cool. Oh, he, he was on there. I didn't know they still had that. I mean, uh, yeah, that that was, um, yeah, when I was a kid, we used to watch that.
What do you think of Fred McDowell? Well, probably the ultimate hill country guy. You know, I I probably do like Good Morning Little Schoolgirl or something like that, like eventually on this channel. Jack was in the Recon Tours also. They were all right. Yeah, I heard of them. I don't know much of their stuff. MTV, get off the air. <laughs> yeah, great Dead Kennedy song. If you want to know the Sgt. Pepper of punk, uh, look up the Frank and Christ album by the Dead Kennedys. They actually got him in trouble, too. Like They, they got prosecuted because there was a H.R. Giger painting inside of there of a bunch of uh, uh, PPs. Sorry for being rude was referencing something you said about 30 minutes ago. Oh, I'm not, sh not sure what it was. <laughs> ACL is still going on, yeah. What, 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 what's ACL? It says cat here. You have a cool Indian nose, Ed. <laughs> There's some Indian on my dad's side of the family. I don't know. It's, I always thought it was kind of a Roman nose. But. You know any reels, Ed? Uh, well, I, I had to play some Irish music on St. Patrick's Day um, at uh, oh. Uh, like it was a country club actually in the area, a gated country club with old people with sweater vest watching me play. And uh, yeah, that's the first time in my life I've ever had to sing Irish music live. And I wanted to fucking hang myself. <laughs> but I mean, I am Irish, so hell. Ever watch it? Might get loud. Movie is Jimmy Page, Jack White, and the Edge collaborate and share. Lead. I haven't seen that. Huh. And Mojo Nixon, MTV, get away from me. <laughs> yeah, that guy was cool. He he had the song um, "Bring Me the Head of Don Henley," <laughs> and he he actually did some stuff with Jello Biafra. This is Austin City Limits. Yeah, I, I didn't know that show lasted um, long enough to have, like, uh, like Jack White on it. I mean, we, we used to watch that on PBS when I was a kid. You know, they used to have Bill Monroe and Stevie Ray Vaughan and people like that on there. You play a Martin D-35, uh, don't have one of those. I, I know a guy that's probably got one. He's got, like, 20 fucking Martins. What's your favorite Willie Nelson song? Uh, I'm going to have to go with um, his cover of Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain. Yeah. Ha ha, then I reckon we won't be asking you to sing whiskey for breakfast. <laughs> I've had whiskey for breakfast at some point in my life. Or play, rather. Don't know that whiskey for breakfast has lyrics. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember it lasted long long enough for the Pixies to tour on it. That's shit. You can look up a like a Bill Monroe uh, show on Austin City Limits, and um, at the end of the show, he brings up uh, like all these bluegrass people, like Jim and Jesse and Matt Wiseman and all this stuff. And I, I met like every person on that stage. I saw John Preen and Billy C. Riley do Red Hot on Austin City Limits. Yep. 
Yeah, John Preen died of the, died of the coof, didn't he? He he actually um, he wrote a song that got big for uh, Jim and Jesse and the Virginia Boys. That that um, you know, Daddy wants to take me back to Muhlenberg County. Tried to show my West Coast gal the Stevie Ray Vaughan show from 1990. LPB wanted me to pay for it, though. Uh, <laughs> says, wait, what? The Pixies played Austin City Limits? I, I, I don't think so. How did you meet so many bluegrass artists? Well, um, you know, you go to the festivals and you can just walk right up to them. I mean, e even the big people. I mean, when, when I was a kid, you know, Bill Monroe and Ralph Stanley and all those people were still alive. And they they would just hang around, you know. Um, they, there, there was no, like, there was nowhere to hide like a rock band or something. Um, you just walk up and say, hey, how you doing? I, I, I've i actually got, like, a ticket from a bluegrass festival that I got all these guys to sign. And it's got, like... Um, you know, Bill Monroe, Jim and Jesse, and the Osborne brothers on it and stuff like that. It'd probably go for like a bazillion dollars on eBay, but I, you know, I wouldn't be able to sell it. Uh, Bill Monroe actually uh, took me up on his bus, you know, and I, I, um, but my dad got some pictures of that. I like, I still got the pictures. I got to dance with him on stage. Probably do a video talking about that. I saw the Pixies in '97. Let's see. <laughs> Yeah, they the Pixies were kind of a like an influence on Nirvana, like as far as like the way they structured songs and shit. Love for you uh, to YouTube Robert Johnson drifting. Well, I, I got plenty of Robert Johnson coming up. Like eventually, I'm I'm working on um, his his version of uh, preaching the blues. Ed, your music knowledge is incredible. Ever been to Floyd Fest? No, no, where's that at? It's like a Pink Floyd thing. Said I did show her Justin Wilson, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gayer on T, yes. <laughs> yeah, I like to watch his cooking stuff. If people got their heads out of their asses, you would be richer than sin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, um, how much money you make uh, in music is kind of proportional to how much um, uh, of this you can do. And uh, so I, you know, don't don't make as much. See, it was long, long ago enough that Kim Deal was still in the band. Let's see, talking about the, let's see, uh, talking about the Pixies.
Yeah, their bass player, he says, okay, okay, yeah. Gas worker, 10 bucks. Thank you very much for that, sir. Um, was you able to check out Billy Strings and Marcus King doing the song Summertime? As somebody asked me about that earlier. I, I will have to look that up. I promised I'd look them up on the last um, on the last chat, and <laughs> like I, I didn't get around to it. But, yeah, I will have to check that out. Look at it this way. 20 years ago, you couldn't do this on YouTube. Yeah, I mean, um, I think they had... Well, well, they didn't have YouTube 20 years ago, did they? Um, I mean, a long time ago when YouTube first started, if you wanted to do, do like a live uh, show, you'd do like blog TV. But I, I never got on there. I think if I'd started on YouTube 15 years ago, I'd probably have like a million subscribers by now. It says, that's why we love you, bro. <laughs> Appreciate it. So it's pretty close. YouTube was like 2005 or thereabout. Yeah, that's. Let's see. Uh, 2006, I think, is the earliest that I'd heard of it. Like I. I, I watched YouTube for a long time before I like got the balls to put stuff on here. It says, yeah, that's my point. Yep. <laughs> And yeah, it was pretty hard to make money on the internet um, before YouTube, like as far as like music was concerned. How much is left in there? Don't think it's about a shot or two. Hmm. Somebody shoot me another super chat and I'll I'll like attempt to kill this thing. What's your favorite YouTube channels? I, I tend to watch um, just people talking. Like I, I, I was into the like the early um, like atheist and science people. I was into you know like Thunderfoot and people like that. Um, I, I watch a lot of uh, lecture like physics lectures and things like that. Lectures on history. Don't really like watch a lot of the stupid clickbait stuff. Watch a lot of music on here. Thinking about working the folky circuit for gigs. Hmm, it, is there one? <laughs> I mean, um, I, I'm sure there's places you can play. But I mean, it's um, it's hard enough to find blues gigs. And he says, says amazing atheist. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've been watching him since uh, about 2007 or something like that. Okay, five bucks, thy Lord root. Kill the Bottle and Death Litter Blues. I played that one earlier. I could repeat it. <laughs> like, all right. Let's see here. Oh, that was more than a shot. Oh. <laughs> I think I'll have to... Uh, I'll, I'll try to kill that... Um, the rest of it before I get off here. I think there is about a shot left in there now. Let me see. Um, t 
tried, but my card got refused. I was, what? Shit. I hate it when that shit happens. Big nerd, big fan of yours. Do you think mathematicians are natural musicians? Um, I don't know. It uh, it helps. <laughs> I, I guess. I mean, um, certain certain rigidity to it, you know. But I mean, the the way we tune instruments is completely mathematical. Like uh, the the uh, even temperament that we use to tune instruments today and for the past maybe two hundred years or so. It's uh, based on the uh, the twelfth root of two. Like every every note on a modern instrument is like the twelfth root of two apart in frequency, I, I believe. And he says, "Eh, Thunderfoot used to be okay." Yeah, he. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's kind of developed an, an obsession with Elon Musk, hasn't he? It's like the it's like the the hyperloop has become his arch nemesis now. I bet all your math students thought you were the coolest teacher at the school. <laughs> Maybe I mean, um, yeah, I mean, um, they they probably dug my hair. But when I first started uh, teaching at USC, like uh, when I was like doing the teaching assistant thing in grad school, like I I asked the lady like um, who kind of managed everybody. I was like, uh, I'm gonna have to cut my hair or some shit, and she's like, Oh no! Nah, when you get up to this level, that they don't really care what you look like. Said, will you play Edward? I mean, um, after your shot, of course. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do Death Letter again since he asked for it a while ago. I mean, um, you get me. I'm at ninety two dollars right now. You get me above a hundred on the super chats, I'll hit y'all one more. How about that? We'll do. Uh, yeah, we'll do some Death Letter. He says, yeah, but if you're okay with repeating, I'm gravy. <clears throat> he says, I got one more sip. Oh. And he asked, um, you were a math teacher? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I got a math degree from um, USC and um, like a math and computer science degree. And uh, I was in graduate school for a while and I did like recitations and stuff. Well, at least it's not Anita Zarkeesian anymore. Ha ha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought that whole thing was silly because I, I don't play video games, and so it wasn't that relevant to me. Edward, do you like jazz stuff? Oh, yeah, I love some jazz. I like some Miles Davis. I got, uh, see, I've been listening to... This this is what I've been wearing out lately on the record player. This uh, Dave Brubeck, uh, like a live show. I'm into some Cold Train, you know, this old like bebop stuff. Come on, focus, camera, focus. Rumor has it he was doing calculus. Yeah, I, I taught uh, calculus two, so that's with the uh, the integrals and, and stuff. I was teaching um, one class of like engineering students and another class of marine biology students, and I'm kind of uh, kind of afraid for the future of um, marine biology and engineering, like as bad as some of those kids were at calculus. Do you like Eric Dolphy? I'm not familiar with him. I have to look that up. Dude was the best and perhaps only jazz bass clarinetist. <laughs> it sounds like he might have been. <laughs> yeah, they, they can come up with some weird instruments in jazz, you know.
Love Take Five. Joe Morello was a phenomenal drummer. Yeah, if if you're into drums, like um, jazz is like the thing to listen to. I, I I can't believe it. Like a lot of these uh, drummers these days don't listen to jazz because that's that's where the shit comes from. You know, I like if if I find a drummer and they know nothing about jazz, I'm always kind of suspect of a like a you know like it's always like what um cuz cuz that's that's where the basics of drumming comes from if they like me some elvin jones hey 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 baby hey <laughs> and he says ow yeah i always ended up with a recursive integral every time i tried doing integration by parts <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> That that was actually the um, the the thing they really couldn't get when I was teaching them the integration by parts deal. Anita Zarkeesian is the worst. Is she still alive? Like, <laughs> haven't heard much from her. But I'm not not very well versed in the uh, you know the uh, field of internet feminism. I was much better at linear algebra. Oh yeah, that that was a pain in the ass, like all those matrices and stuff. Like that that was the that was the one class like I made a B in. Like I I made A's like all A's in college. I made a B in linear algebra. Bartok Goodman and Segovia is the coolest quartet ever. But uh, Goodman, um, hmm. and you know, like a Andrew Segovia or something, yeah. Guys, I'm not too familiar with. And he says, I'm learning. And what, what is that? Uh, oh, that's a fist. Uh, yeah, man. She's still around, Thunderfoot kind of straw mander. Uh, <laughs> Damn you, smart it. Yeah, I mean, in a certain way, like I'm, I mean, I'm retarded in other ways, but like, like Andes, Andes, or and Andre Segovia. I knew it was something like Andrew. I met three Tet. I'm not sure if I know who that is. Saul Goodman. Okay. Those are the guys I'm not too familiar with. I took a jazz history class in college, and it was a great class. It never felt like work. It was so fascinating. And Gizmodus says, Trio? I love I prefer to play in trios myself. Like my, my personal band, like my electric band is a three piece and I play in a, another band that's a four piece. And Benny Goodman, okay. So he's the old school. As far as classical goes, mad props to Nars, let's see. Narskiko Yipes, Yipes, though. I, I I like a lot of classical, you know. Um, I, I likes me some some Wagner and stuff like that. I, I got a Sibelius record down here. I've been wearing out. Andre Segovia. Okay, yeah. Get that twelve string out. Wake up, Mama. <laughs> okay. I'm at 92 bucks. Y'all get me over 100. I'll I'll do some um, some Statesboro and I'll do um, old uh, Death Letter again.
throw some money in the hat. Now, yeah, I'll, I'll play y'all a couple and maybe get out of here. You know, it's almost four hours for this uh, this live thing. Uh, and I'll kill that uh, that corn liquor there. I play in a one-piece band like Les Paul before Mary Ford. Well, yeah, that's that's what I'm doing on the internet. <laughs> it's like a one-piece band. Throw down some some moolah. <laughs> Oh, thy Lord Root, eight bucks. Thank you. But you're wearing your hat. Okay, yeah. All right, let's play some music. Just uh, let me kill this cigarette. We'll do Death Letter and uh, we'll, we'll do uh, Statesboro Blues. He says, here's a million thumbs up. <laughs> there's a million, I'll do free bird. Not sure if it's uh, my issue, but I've, I've tried multiple times to give you sinus moolah. And no dice. Yeah, I'm not sure who that is. I mean, uh, yeah, the fabulous Moolah was from Columbia, like in my home state. So the wrestler. <laughs> Speaking of a uh, One Piece band, um, have you heard of Bob Log the Third? Saw him live. He was great. I, I don't think I'm. I don't think I know too much about him. Oh, some, some moolah, you mean like money, okay. Yeah, it might be some weird thing with YouTube. I'll uh, drink the moonshine after I play... I'm already feeling that that last swig I took. Rain oh Owen uh, Owen hand is good with the loop pedal speaking of which. Old old chip tune artist, he's a producer now. Okay. Mic set up. Mic stands, the bane of my existence. my thumb pick over there again. All right, we'll do the sun house first. Repeat of earlier. Get this capo off here and probably retune this thing. Oh. 
said I got a letter this morning How do you break me red? The gal you love is in. Well, I grabbed up my suitcase and I took off down the road. By the time I got there, she was laying on the cooling board. Well, I grabbed up my suitcase and I took off down the road. By the time I got there, she was laying on the cooling board. You know, there was 10,000 people standing around the barren ground. I didn't know I loved her. They began to let her down. Well, there was 10,000 people standing around the barren ground. I didn't know I loved her. They began to let her down Well, I walked in real close And I looked down in her face I won't see the good old gal again The judgment day Well, I walked in real close And I looked down in her face I won't see the good old gal Lord, again, the judgment day. I didn't feel so bad till the good Lord's sun went down. I didn't have a soul to throw my arms around. Well, didn't feel so bad till the good Lord's sun went down. I didn't have a soul to throw my arms around. Someone don't love you, don't look like satisfaction. I don't care what you do, well, so love someone, don't love you. Don't look like satisfaction, I don't care what you do. Make you do things you don't want to do Love sometimes Make you feel sad and blue Well Love's hard on fall Make you do things you don't want to do Don't love that satisfaction I don't care what you do Some of the lyrics, anyway. He had like fucking 10 verses on that song. What, did, uh, what else did I say I do? Statesboro? Yeah. right on this one. Blind Willie lyrics are like terribly hard. <laughs> Wake up mama turn your lamp down low Wake up mama turn your lamp down The nerve to drive Papa Mac tail from your door. You the mighty mean woman, do the meanest way. You the mighty mean woman, do me this way. When I leave here, I'm going way to stay. Well, my mother died, left me reckless. My daddy died and left me wild. Wow, wow. 
mama died and left me reckless My daddy died and left me wild, wild, wild Well, I ain't good looking But I'm sure some sweet girls ain't no child I once had a woman sweeter than I'd ever seen Once had a woman sweeter than I'd ever seen Well, she treated me like a king and she was a doggone queen Big in the Savannah, Lord, he didn't stop You should have seen that fireman when he got up on the hard well in the corner, bring me my traveling shoe. Well, Grandma and Grandpa, they got them too. Well, sister, tell your mother, I ain't it tell your niece, I ain't it tell your uncle now, cousin, tell my friends, well, I'm going out the country, baby, don't you wanna go? I might take a pair of brown and I might take a one or two more. Well, Grandma and Sister got them, Daddy got them, Ain't it got them? I got them. Well, reach over in the corner, hand me my traveling shoes. Well, I've looked over in the corner, and Grandma, Grandpa had them too. was a lyrical approximation of Statesboro Blues. <laughs> Flubbed a few. That piece of shit mic stand. And I said I'd try to kill the uh, the jug here. That was about a shot there. That's it. I killed it. Oop, a couple drops. I appreciate all your um, your uh, thanks and stuff like that. It says, great job, my dude. Thank you for that. Wore out the Almond Brothers Fillmore East album uh, when I was a kid back in '75. Yeah, they, yeah, they did. They made that song pretty big. That, that's probably why a lot of people know uh, Blind Willie now. Let's see here. Uh, so that's what I'm talking about, man. Uh, thank you for that. And we're on four hours here, just running a marathon. Still got 20 people watching the hill. The hot as fuck in here, like with these lights. Like I got these these big lights beaming down on me and stuff. You'd be surprised how much uh, just light it takes to make a camera look good.
Y'all smoke me another one? Might want to save the cheap stuff for gas, my bro. <laughs> you talking about liquor? They were down to 16, 17 people. This is basically a coffee shop gig. What are your thoughts on John Fogarty's slide playing? I have not seen him play slide. I, I didn't know he played slide. I missed a chance to see him in Augusta one time. I had just paid to see Elton John, and so I didn't want to pay for another concert. Like He, he was there like a week or two later, I think. But some of these, it, yeah, some of these uh, chats, I've, um, like I, I've had like um, almost 80 people. I, I think... Um, I think it might it might tell me how many concurrent viewers I had at once, like um what like the most I had. Guess we got we got the hardcore fans still in here now. <laughs> like if if there's such a thing as like me having hardcore fans. So that I guess he does it on knocking on my back door. Right, there is a slide on there. I, yeah, I didn't know that was him. I thought he might have handed that off to the lead guy or something. Hmm. Yeah, I totally forgot about that. There, there was a slide on that song. The Ed Groupies. Yep. <laughs> I, I've I've had like legitimate groupies before in the past. That, yeah. <laughs> e equals M C squared. Yeah, nice little equation. It's the, uh, the rest energy of mass. He swears to God this song is not about acid. Well, yeah, they, when they say that and they're from the 60s, they're fucking always lying. It's like, what did uh, Hendrix uh, used to always say about Purple Haze? He'd say, uh, no, I, I just had a dream I was under the sea, man. Like, wasn't about acid at all. Press X to doubt. <laughs> no, I, I don't doubt it. Seems pretty acid soaked to me. Might might make it cooler in GL. Yeah. Ryan Cooter played slide on one of uh, Captain Beefheart's album. Oh shit! Huh. I didn't know that. I think it was uh, Safe as Milk. Okay. Yeah, the, uh, the bass player for Captain Beefheart used to live um, in my hometown, and uh, he had a studio here. His name was Beaumark. I, I, I don't know if he was the original bass player, but he, he used to play for Captain Beefheart. Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, yeah, everybody swore that was like, um, you know, like LSD, like, um, you know, the initials, but um, John Lennon claimed it wasn't. They're always lying. They're always lying. Have you ever smoked pot? If so, did you inhale? Uh, yes, I, I smoked marijuana, and I, I did inhale. <laughs> Just ne never stuff never treated me right. I, I didn't like pot. 
Like it kind of it gave me like uh, those um, you know anxiety attacks. I, I, I was that guy that was like, I'm not having a fucking heart attack, man. You know that guy. I would be surprised if there was a person amongst us that didn't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Said, yeah, I prefer beer myself. It never creeps up on you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'd prefer beer. Have you ever tried your hand at lap steel? No, I've never touched a lap steel. Um, no, no, I, no, I've, I've actually um, held one. I, I didn't play it, though. Now, pedal steel, I'd have no idea what to do with that. Let's see, uh, I'm allergic to pot. Oh, damn. I, I didn't know people could be allergic to it. Says Gizmodus says, nothing to see here. <laughs> says, Grow your own, he says. Yeah, the pot just uh, never got along with it. Might, might be the shitty pot we have here because it's still illegal here. I, I mean, uh, if I tried some of the you know, cool, like, designer stuff they have in Colorado. I might like it. I, I don't know. The stars that played with Laughing Sam's Dice. <laughs> it's definitely a LSD reference. I, I've done my fair share of uh, LSD. kind of funny i'm moving to a place where pot is legal and it doesn't do a damn thing for me you know a lot of people like when they start doing it like it doesn't have much of an effect i, I think that's why like i i got along with it more when i was younger because it didn't affect me too bad but uh, then, then when i started kind of feeling it like uh like i was getting like anxiety off of it for some reason it says yes yeah, a weed or here in seattle yeah He says, oh, I mean, because I don't smoke. Oh, yeah, yeah. I haven't smoked pot in, like, probably ooh, 15 years. It's like I smoke tobacco, but not grass. Yeah, yeah I, like, when I'm talking to potheads, I'll use these terms like uh, grass and reefer, and they'll look at me like I'm some old boomer. Like, what? No, it's weed. You still calling it reefer? You you like my fucking dad, man. <laughs> Red dragon, yeah. Um when I was a kid it was like eight percent, now it's twenty eight percent. You talking talk about like the THC content? They're black stars, not not sure what that is. So it's killer out here. So I guess you're like in a like a legal area. And Tin Shack video says boo. <laughs> I, I guess because I don't smoke. I, I I don't know. Um, ha ha! Yeah, my old lady makes fun of me for it. Mr. Bill, you, you talking about like like the uh, Clay guy on SNL? Ask about nickel and dime bags. Well, yeah, the the only time I ever paid for drugs in my life. Now, my my best friend was a drug dealer when I was younger, so I I, I got like everything for free. Um. So the one time I paid for drugs was I, I bought a dime bag of pot. Is a like a chick friend of mine like wanted some and I smoked it with her. Says I will be Southern Washington. Okay, yeah, that's, that's legal there.
And he says, West Coast people are weird. They they get weirded out when I hold the door open for them. Like, <laughs> well, they, they like rude out there or something. Do you like Guinness, Edward? Yeah. I, I prefer the Guinness um, extra stout, like the, the, the stronger version. I like the uh, the fucking draft. Like a, it, it'll, you know, it'll get you by in a kind of a uh, situation where that's all they got. But um, like I, I'm more into the like the heavier like like a extra stout version. Purple micro dot. Yeah, yeah, you're talking my language now. That's that's some that's some acid. Yeah. I don't smoke it. I was referring to the black slang for plop, for pot. Okay. okay. <laughs> Mr. Bill is a skydive. Hmm. Still not getting you there. Like, uh, <laughs> let's see. Um, hang on. Ten shape videos? No, they don't. Not rude. They're just not expecting it. Okay. Yeah. It is in Seattle too. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely pot country. I'm drinking the extra stout. The uh, draft is too creamy, in my humble opinion. Well, the the draft is like it's kind of made like an old cask ale. That, that that's the kind of carbonation it has. Um, they you know they they tried to make it like uh, like the old days, like a you know like a British cask ale, but it's it's just kind of for a stout. It's kind of light, you know. I mean this this porter here, this uh, founder's porter is like heavier than than a Guinness. And uh, Guinness is supposed to be stout and porter, right? Um, Purple Pyramid. <laughs> it ever had Nola I Irish Channel Stout? I never had that one. I, I don't think it's even available uh, in my area. I've, I've never seen it because of, I mean, uh, any kind of Irish stout um, here, I, I would take notice of. The window pane, that, that's some that's some acid there. Talk about old school. What about buying a lid of weed? Yeah, that's that's something they used to talk about. Um, like back in the, back in the good old days, like my dad's day, he he used to talk about like a lid. I, I still don't know like exactly how much that is, but he'd, he'd be like, um, yeah, they they'd fill a bag up with weed to the top, and they called that a lid. Window pane blotter, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I fucking preferred the the blotter acid, like the little pieces of paper. Yeah. He says, "I mean, Founders is going to be heavy regardless." Uh huh. Yeah, not as heavy as this shit, but. <laughs> um. But uh, yeah, this, this stuff is six point five. It's got a pretty good bit of alcohol in it. I mean, you know, compared to like a like your normal American um, piss lager. Says so music is my drug now. So, yeah, um, yeah, right on there. Yeah. It's one of our local beers from New Orleans. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, the Irish Channel Stout. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, we don't get that here. Yo, Edward, you're still live. LOL. Yeah. Four hours, over four hours. We're, we're doing a fucking marathon here. A, a lid is one ounce. Oh, okay. Okay. Then uh, Odie Slim says a lid is 25 joints. All right. <laughs> yeah, I think about half of one is enough to fuck me up. But Couldn't see your cigar box at background. Yeah, I, I, I got to work on that thing. Like, I think I took some parts off of it, so I got to get it fixed back up. Down in Baton Rouge, they have uh, Founders on Tap, and it's uh, 14% or thereabouts. Ow. Yeah. 
I mean, uh, back in the day, I used to be into like really high alcohol beers, like barley wines and stuff like that. But um, I, I kind of got tired of uh, getting fucked up off a six pack. It's like, nah, you know. <laughs> Do you think you'll try your hand at a uh, Page's slide on when the levee breaks? Well, I have played that with a band. I mean, um, I, I know it like in that style. So, I mean, it's, uh, you, you just, you got to like have a fucking 12 string. I, I've got one, like an electric 12 string. But um, it's kind of a pain in the ass and like drag that out live and have that just sitting there just for one song, right? I just finished mopping the floor and tutoring. I'm glad you're still alive. Yeah, I'm just hanging out, you know. Ever play with a harmonica player? Yes, I've, um, for some reason I attract harmonica players. Like I have guys like show up to, to uh, shows I do with bands and um, like, hey, I, I got some harmonicas. You want me to come up? And it, yeah, I'll invite them up. I love having them, you know, because um, it, um, it makes it sound more bluesy. I can't play one myself, but uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've had like a several harmonica guys like show up at shows and, uh, you know, do a song or two with me. Three fingers for a baggie. Yeah, yeah they, they used to talk about like a finger or this or that, yeah. Um, tutoring at this time of night. <laughs> <coughs> The thing is, I just got my mojo working, but I, it just won't work on you. <laughs> it's one of my favorite Muddy songs. This is a Bebek uh, Kalshaw. Thank you very much for that super chat. Seven ninety nine. He says, "Keep it up." I appreciate it, man. But have you ever played with a harp, like like string harp? Oh, no, no, never tried that. I, I don't think I know any like people that play like a literal harp. Welcome to the Ed Groupie Club, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, after four hours, um, like the uh, 14 concurrent viewers I have, like the y'all are the, the groupies. See, uh, thanks, duo. It's morning here. What, what country are you in, uh, Mr. Bear? And he says, uh, what's your favorite song you've something, uh, have to finish that sentence for me there. Been trying to get my local harpist to learn Alice Coltrane. Edward, you should do blues lessons. I, I've thought about doing lessons videos. I don't know how good of a teacher I am because I, like, I, I did like the few times I tried to teach guitar, I was pretty bad at it. Living in Myanmar, so over there in Asia. Okay, damn, it's all over the world here. That's pretty cool. What's your favorite song right now? I, I've never had like a what I could call a favorite song. Like, um, I mean, there's too many of them. I mean, uh, the, the closest thing would probably be like um, Purple Haze, <laughs> like a big Hendrix guy, you know. It's a shame I can't play Hendrix on here because I'd, I'd get struck down for it. They, they don't even... Um, just try to take your money and put ads on it uh, when you do Hendrix on YouTube. They just take it down completely. 
says he, he has some tutorials on his channel that yeah i've got like a tutorial on a starting blues and stuff like that like or like slide guitar like an introduction to slide guitar I'm a member of the Tobacco Workers Union, and thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You're welcome. I'll volunteer to help you learn how to teach. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, um, I mean, it, I can probably do, like, some specific songs, but it's, it's going to be for people who, like, already kind of know how to play and stuff. It's just going to be, like... Um, specific to blues like kind of like if you know how to play guitar already something like that greetings from mexico yeah i played a cinco de mayo gig on um on thursday yeah it's cool it says but yeah i reckon i got a bounce it was good interacting with you have a good one. Okay, well, catch you later, thy Lord Root. Glad you showed up and stuck around for a while. Let's see. The longest train I ever saw went down that Georgia line. <laughs> yeah, that's in the pines. You know, it says something when I get ads uh, on instant for Jimi Hendrix credit card. Jimi Hendrix credit cards? God damn, they, how bad are they fucking his corpse? <laughs> the man is probably rolling in his grave. Yeah, absolutely. Do you hunt or fish or bird watch? I I fish, like uh, hunting was like always too like cold for me and then stuff like didn't feel like doing it. Like I I, I had some binoculars. I I used to watch birds on my bird feeder, but I, yeah, big fishing guy. So I think that would be fine. What's their deal with uh, Hendrix and that fake Hendrix? Um, I don't know. I, I, I believe Hendrix's estate is like kind of managed by like old school uh, music business people who just don't believe in uh, letting his stuff be on YouTube. I mean, you, you can find it on here, but, um, you know, like, like if I do a Hendrix cover, like it's going down like immediately. Get some porn ads on here. <laughs> see, um, there's all sorts of levels that you can teach. It doesn't have to be basic. Yeah, I mean, like, like if I taught something, it, it'd be like um, for people that know how to play already, probably. Money and boomers who have it. Yeah, that pretty much. It's probably uh, boomers that run Hendrix's estate. Yeah. You guys need to get AdBlock. Yes, I, I've got AdBlock Plus. Yeah, looking to AdBlock Plus for your browser. Oh yeah, dude, Jimi Hendrix credit cards. That that is fucking outrageous. I am offended by that. He says uh, it's depressing. Yeah, that 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 is fucking depressing. Says, aha, the porn bots are back. Yeah, yeah, they are. Is there alligator gar around you? Yeah. Oh yeah. Never caught one, but I've I've seen them. Ever heard of the uh, stray cats? I have one of their forty fives. Yeah. I mean, Stray Cats were great. Yeah, that that was a nineteen uh, eighties uh, rockabilly band. It's like really cool stuff. Like uh, Brian Setzer.
laughing my ass off, porn ads, what the fuck? Yeah. I mean, really have to advertise porn? I mean... <laughs> Aren't the rights to Jimmy stuff owned by the family? Yeah, but they they probably have like a third party like managing like the stuff. Just like Robert Johnson's estate. Setzer's an amazing guitarist, but um, mummifying rockabilly kind of killed it as an active genre. Uh, but, you know, um, I, I did the punk thing for a while, and they, they have like a like a sub-sub-genre of that called psychobilly that, that was pretty, pretty cool, you know. They had guys with like stand-up basses and stuff. Revive all this and bring back that and look at how vintage this is kind of kind of made it uncool in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, um Yeah, it kinda declawed it, yeah. I mean, um you you're gonna get like very few people in music um who um like as far as like rock and roll is concerned, you you're not gonna get many um Jerry Lee Lewis's and um and little Richards, who actually are rock and roll, like as as a person, the, you know what I mean, like like the personality. Like a you, you fucking little Richard was like rock and roll as a person. That that was just like a his his lifestyle <laughs> and shit. What's your favorite fishing pole? I I use uh, spinning reels. You know them um, them weird things like a like click up the uh, the piece of metal like like the spinning reels. All right, gotta go. Thank you for playing tonight. Um, will you be back next Sunday? I'll try to be. Uh, thank you for coming out and uh, looking at the show, uh, Mister Ten Shack videos. He says, uh, oh, yeah, I love Psychobilly. The, the Rev and Tiger Army are my favorites. I, I wish I'd gone to that Reverend Horton Heat show like 20 years ago. I didn't, didn't go to it. It's got some life to it, yeah. I mean, Rockabilly's fucking great. I mean, I, I, did, I, I got to go to, like, Sun Studios and stuff. I was there when it first came out. I I loved it then and love it now. Talking about Hendrix. Funnily enough, uh, my first instrument was the piano, hence the profile. Jerry Lee Lewis, Little Richard, and Elton John was a lifetime was a lifeline from classical boredom. Yeah, you know, um, the farther you come along in music, that that classical like um, starts to look pretty cool, though. I mean, but I I see what you're saying. I I kind of play piano like a little bit. You know, you, you can hear me playing some on that that a hundred year old instruments video. Saw the stray cats at J.C. Dobbs in Philly like 1983. Oh, damn, that's pretty fucking cool. You like Chuck Berry? Well, of course, yeah. If you're going to play a guitar and you don't learn Chuck Berry, then uh, you're fucking stupid <laughs> you, you gotta learn like Johnny B. Good and you know like roll over Beethoven and stuff like that classical is great but middle school me was getting bored as hell okay yeah probably making you hear the wrong stuff 
He says, I, I'm stuck at beginner level, LOL. <laughs> it takes time, man. It takes time. When Setzer only had five tats. Oh, he's a tattoo guy. Yeah. Now the the bass player from the string, uh, the uh, Stray Cats, uh, they they came to Aiken like uh, last year, I think. Um, like him and his band, like can't remember his name, but he, apparently he he did a pretty good show. Consider Hoyt axed in uh, airline made of snow. I'll check that out. Also, yeah, rockabilly is fantastic. Taught myself to Travis pick. That that's quite an accomplishment. Um, but I turn up the dirty too much. Uh, makes it psychabilly, rock and roll. The Reb is the biggest influence on my playing because of that. Slim Jim Phantom. Let's see, uh, who, who would that be? Did you get to Merle Fest? Uh, it's like a Merle Travis festival? I'm not sure. I, I, where's that at? My first song I learned was Johnny B. Good. I skipped so many levels. What well, you see what where guitar players fuck up is that they buy the uh, Metallica tab book and that's the first thing they they do and uh, Metallica's a great band. But um like they they bypass the you know the the Johnny B. Good and the stuff like that. They don't learn the uh, the Chuck Berry and uh you know miss miss the basics. You you got to learn like the basics of something to to get the hard stuff. Slim Jim Phantom was bass for Stray Cat. Cat's, I, okay, um, damn. I that that's not the name I remember. But might have been okay. <laughs> like, I mean, uh, my buddy Josh like uh, saw the guy. Like in a, a I, I, I guess that was his name. But I, I, I've got like a shitty memory, you know. But yeah, the 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 guy that you know played the stand up bass and all that stuff. I knew a dude who decided to learn nothing else matters first from Tab. It took him a while to really get off the ground. That is an easy song, but uh, not not the first thing you should learn. You should learn, uh, you know, Chuck Berry or, you know, some old blues guy, you know. Let's see, is it, nah, Lee, yeah, Lee Rocker is the name I heard. Yeah, Lee Rocker is the bass player. He says uh, Slim Jim is the is the drummer, right? Merle Watson, Doc Watson near Asheville, North Carolina, flat pick in heaven. I probably saw Doc Watson like when I was a kid. Um, like like at a bluegrass festival, but I do not remember it. He says, "Sorry, I'm old." Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. What it, it was a uh, Lee Rocker? I, I do uh, recognize that name. I feel I'm stuck playing the same three songs. Then I find new riffs to learn and try to learn the rest. Well, well, I mean, the key to learning stuff is playing it like over and over and over. So you you probably you're probably doing the right thing, like just um, you know, just play it like a million times and, until you know it. I 
think I'm, I think I'm going to get off here pretty soon. Like, uh, it's been four and a half hours. You know, just doing a marathon here. I don't even know what chords to learn anymore. Just uh, learn some Hank Williams chords and you'll be fine. That's called practice. Yeah, yeah. What gets me going is I ask a friend, um, he'll send me a, a John Mayer song I hate, and, and the uh, spite motivations, uh, the, the spite motivates me to learn something new. <laughs> yeah, I, I was never a John Mayer fan. Maybe it's not healthy, but it gets me going. Yeah. If you like rockabilly guitarists, check out Danny Gittin. Okay, I will. I tell you, like uh, Eddie Cochran's lead guy was fucking awesome. Like, um, like who? Yeah, um, the guy, the guy that played for, um, for damn, um, what's, what's the old uh, leather leather guy? Um, um, got got fucking Alzheimer's tonight. Um, be bop -a that that guy was pretty good like the, the guy that played for him the guy whose name i can't remember um gene vincent gene vincent yeah and of course scotty moore that played with elvis like in the early days That 80s uh, to one Kentucky Derby horse was the fastest I've ever seen. The, oh, the, the, they just had the Kentucky Derby. I, I didn't know that. Let's see, I have his mystery chain. His mystery train tape is uh, is on my watch later. Yeah, I, I, that I got that on this channel somewhere. Played with Robert Gordon. Um. Problem is I can't seem to stick to one thing. Uh, example, I'd be motivated to learn guitar, but uh, but next week I'd be motivated to play some drums. Now uh, to do, do the guitar. Drummers are like usually assholes. Just a little secret I want to tell you. Cliff Galupo was that the uh, Gene Vincent guitar player? Yeah. Link Ray was a good one too. Okay, yeah. Any blues will do, sir. I'm probably gonna get off here soon. Your rockabilly mystery train train is great. Like, I think I did the electric on that one, didn't I? Like the Gretsch, yeah. Link Stay was on Robert Gordon's first album. Okay. Typo is Cliff Gallop. Link Link Ray. I have to look him up. Ingle coil sound, but they have humbuckers in them. Question for guitarist: What scales should a beginner learn first? You, you know, I I actually uh, didn't learn scales until after I learned to play guitar. Like, <laughs> but um, you can learn that blues scale. You know, to play some lead like in the box. Um, it's like a pentatonic scale. Marshall Tucker flutes. 
Yeah, that, yeah, they, they were the one band besides Jethro Tull that had flutes. Yeah, that's why I asked if you had your Gretsch handy earlier. I ain't got it. I'd, I'd have to mic up the amp and all that stuff. Please is the magic word, Edward. <laughs> but I think I'm done playing for tonight. The box one pentatonic, of course, the uh, the broke kid Bible. I, I, you know, I, I didn't learn music theory until like long after I learned how to play instruments and stuff. It was weird. Might be good to do a video on the uh, the blues box on the guitar. That might be a good teaching video. But, uh, all right, fellas. Uh, yeah, we got uh, like ten groupies still watching me, and um, it's been like oh. Four hours and 40 minutes. I, I think I'm going to get off here. And uh, we'll see you all next week on next Sunday. Play all some more tunes. I, I think I might uh, do a bunch of Robert Johnson songs next week. I've been planning like a, like a Robert Johnson episode. But I think we're going to call it a night. All right, thank you all very much for showing up and your super chats and all. Uh, I'll see you all next time.